D-A-S-C-A-L You are now rocking with that dude Pascal We be going wild Haitian in the building So, so, so original Got the haters Got your feelings Get your hands up to the ceiling And keep them held high Cause some of this is already Forget about it Goodbye Hold up, we just saying hi Find somebody Rise up Weekdays Catch us live Somebody was us Good evening Good morning and good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Pascal Show. Hope you guys are all doing well out there. Hope this day, this night, this show finds you in great spirits. Okay, because I need you guys' attention. I need your energy, your positive energy, as much as we possibly can get for tonight. Listen, I am very honored to have some people coming onto the show tonight to share their story. Now, we've covered this story for a very long time now. But this case, this story, isn't done yet. We got a very beautiful family still trying to get justice, still trying to get clarity, most importantly, on what happened to their loved one, Riley Riley Strain. We're here to talk about it. And hopefully you guys are here to listen. And of course, if there's any information that you may have that could help us get closer to figuring out what happened here. And if justices need to be served, please be sure to reach out. That'd be greatly appreciated. But we're here to have a very, very informative conversation. So listen up. But before we get into everything, please do me a favor. Hit that like button down below, please, and thank you. That would really, really mean a lot. Hit that reaction button if you're watching on Facebook and any of the other platforms that I'm simulcasting from. Please and thank you. Do not forget, crush that follow button if you're watching on Facebook, Twitter. Follow me on TikTok and Instagram. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube. That'd be greatly appreciated as well. If you already are subscribed to my YouTube channel, hit that join button down below. Become a member of the family that would be amazing also if you want to support the channel even further go check out patreon.com forward slash the pascal show it's in the ticker down below me going that way as we speak and then of course shameless plug but we got to let's talk about it please be sure to check out pascalmerch.com okay got to get all that stuff out the way the purple lights out here they don't pay themselves okay let's keep it real all right and we got to keep fighting and keep moving trying to get as much clarity for all these people for all these cases that we talk about and future cases that are just around the bend anyway guys we got to get into things we got to get into this conversation as i said we have some very very uh important special people coming onto the show we already know about this whole case surrounding riley strain this young man's body was found eight and a half miles around eight and a half miles down the river from where he was last seen. The family is still trying to figure out what happened here. There's been a lot of strange details, everything from bystander uh, accounts all the way to how he was found. Like the fact that he didn't have pants or boots on, but his underwear and socks were still on him when he was found. There's been more information. Brian Enton from News Nation had an amazing conversation with the family talking about the fraternity brothers and how they treated this whole missing case. There was also a letter that was written to the family talking about a commotion that was going on inside the hotel room on the very night that Riley Strain went missing. So I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to tell you what. I got a lot of questions, guys. I have a lot of questions, and I'm hoping we can get some of them cleared out tonight on the show. So I'm very special. I'm very, very honored to have this special group of men sharing the show, sharing their time with us. So please welcome Ryan Gilbert, Chris Whited, and Chris Dingman to the show. Good evening, gentlemen. How are you guys doing? Doing well. Good. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Of course, of course. I I, I have to say thank you so much for being here because I know how busy it's been for you guys. You guys have been everywhere doing everything you can to find 
clarity around this very mysterious disappearance and discovery of Riley Strange. So I just have to say, just again, thank you so much for being here on this platform. It means the world, not only just to me, but to the family as well that's watching right now. So a few things. I know that a lot of people have been wondering about how he was found, how Riley Strain was found, et cetera. So I, I have to ask you those things because I know that everybody's already asked a lot of things as far as, oh, you know, where were you when you got the phone call that he was missing and all that? We, we've moved on from that chapter. We're now in a new chapter, right? So I'm going to ask you guys, as far as he, him being found, because one thing that was very interesting was the fact that he was found without boots and pants on. His jeans, his buckle jeans. We also learned that he wore a belt all the time. But his pants and his boots came off. But his underwear and his socks were still on him. Now, one thing, I, I've already talked to Chris Dingman about this, and so I'm going to ask Ryan and, and Chris Whited this. Is there anything else, any other details that were found on him when he was found in that river? Ryan? His, his Apple Watch was still on him, along with his shirt, uh, his boxers, and his socks. Okay. So his boxers and his socks. Okay. And 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 was there anything else? Like, Chris, Mr. Why did is there anything else that was added in there as well? He, he had on two necklaces. One was at a, a heart cross on it that he'd gotten for Christmas a few years back. Oh wow! So a necklace was still on his on around his neck, yeah, which is um, also which is also very loose. Mm -hmm. what, I yes. mean, I would consider that fairly loose. So underwear, socks, and I hate to ask this detail, but was it were they like boxer briefs or were they no. boxer boxers? They were boxer boxers. That's what he wore. Oh wow. So th oh, and we all know how easy those come off when the jeans come down. No doubt. They come off easier, faster. <laughs> Let's yeah. be honest. Come on now. So that's very interesting. So the necklace was still on him. Boxers, regular boxers were on him. And socks. Yes, now, sir. And, and of course, he's always worn <laughs> pants or always worn, um, uh, 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 you know, a, a belt. He's always worn a leather or yes. some sort of belt at all times, correct? When he's in jeans or dress pants or dress shorts, yes. He prefers to be in gym shorts and sweatpants. Okay. So then let me ask you guys this. Is there anything in particular that gave you guys the full red flag of there possibly could be foul play here? What was the one thing for sure after he was found that you said, this ain't right? There's a red flag, and there could be some foul play. I think the red flags came in stages for me. Um, first off, with him still having the articles of clothing on him that he still had, uh, we were told that that's not uncommon for people in a river to lose their pants and their shoes. I didn't agree with that, but mm -hmm. went along with it for the time being. Um that was the first red flag for me. The second one was from the preliminary autopsy that the police had done when there was no signs of injury, no broken bones, no blunt force trauma, but the kids supposedly fell off this 21 foot drop onto these rocks. Not right. a red flag does, does not make sense. It, not it, yeah. I'd have to say it doesn't make any sense if he fell, if he mm -hmm. was a fall that high, no blunt force tra force trauma to the head, no bruising, no nothing, but he was just found in the river. It, it, it yeah, I'd have to agree. Uh, Chris, uh, Chris W. Is it okay if I say Chris W? I just don't want to make yes, sir. any confusion here. Um, wh what are your thoughts on that too? Was it, was that the, the instant red flag for you as well? The first red flag for me was when we first got down there and we saw the area that supposedly he had, fallen from you know you you see it you look down and when you get pictures from the water showing 
just what it looks like from the water and you see how much you know brush and trees and then just the rocks right it's like you you're gonna fall but you're gonna hit ground before you make the water and then you got to go through the brush to get to the water so that didn't make sense to me you know and then of course later we found out you know he was found in his boxers uh his socks the shirt you know oh so you you found so chris w you found that out about that later about the pants and boots missing from his body correct yeah we we found out after riley had been found after we were home oh wow i don't think they even told us before that oh wow so you guys didn't know about that until oh wow that's that's interesting that's interesting. Dude. Ryan, wasn't that when we were at the funeral home, whenever that information got leaked to the media and we started getting blown up uh, yeah. on our phone when we were meeting? Yeah, it started, out, home. it started out as what we thought was just another rumor until we, we got verification from the police detective on that. Wow. Yeah, that was the day that I screenshotted that and sent to the war room and said a few choice words of who the hell's this guy and how did he find out this information and every one of us was just like, we don't know anything about this. And uh, within a couple hours later, I think that the boys reached out to the detective and actually got confirmation. We still have no idea how this other person, you know, knew or just took a guess or whatever. But yeah, it, it was a complete shock to the family wow. because we were all just in awe when that, when that got posted. No kidding. No kidding. Uh, and I think that's a, a piece of information I don't think a lot of us knew about either. So then let's talk about this, because this is something I've been very curious about. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I've talked to Chris Dingman about this uh, a lot. But it's it, like I said, it's a blessing to have you guys on here. So I really want to pick your brain about this. What was up with the relationship with you all, the family and law enforcement? Did it get any better or did it get worse? It definitely got better as far as communication. Uh, it started out pretty horrible. We went through the whole weekend. That weekend, they disappeared on Friday night with nothing. We had no idea if anybody was doing anything. Uh, finally, come Monday morning, we got a short phone call from the detective mm -hmm. that uh, basically just touching base with us. Uh, we never got anything the rest of the day. Come Tuesday, we got the same short phone call and as far as i remember we got nothing back tuesday and it was actually on wednesday about five days in before we uh spoke face to face with the detective so we at that point we were we were five days in basically and everybody was blowing everything up in nashville at that point i mean things were getting we're getting crazy yeah and, and the fact that was days and you had nothing days. from law enforcement until so then what was it that what was it that finally got them to reach out to you was it you guys getting on national news calling them out or was it something else well i think that this thing was they were they were so far behind by the time they got back to work monday i'm mm -hmm. sure that they were overran with calls and tips and i think they were trying to wrap their heads around what was going on here because it wasn't just a normal missing person's case. You know, we knew this boy didn't run off trying to get away from something for the few days because they were supposed to get back on a bus Sunday morning and go back to school. So at that right. point, I think they were trying to figure out what they had came back in to work on Monday in the middle of. Right, man. Okay. Interesting. Because it seems to me that, okay, maybe they stitched themselves up a little bit as far as their presence, as far as their transparency and their communication with the whole family. But then as soon as Riley was found, it seems like it, they just kind of dropped the ball again, meaning they said no indication of foul play. We're going to keep it moving. But you guys decided to do a second autopsy. So to me, at least, you know, this is my own personal opinion. Uh, and this, uh, this does, this does not echo the, uh, court of public opinion, 
But when I hear about a family doing a second autopsy, clearly it feels like maybe they feel that law enforcement or, you know, uh, medical examiner office, they feel like they're not fully satisfied with the results of that said autopsy that was already performed. So can we talk about that for a little bit? The second autopsy that you guys did, why was it done? Ryan? We didn't want to put all of our eggs in one basket. Um, through the whole dynamic of the investigation, uh, there were some things that, you know, of course, we're the family. So we think that always think that there can be more done. Uh, we just we didn't want to put all of our eggs in their autopsy basket, so to speak. And uh, we didn't want to go home and have questions for the rest of our lives on this case if we didn't get the answers that we were comfortable with. So we set up the second to be done the next day uh, on our own accord to try to at least back up what they're telling us, if not find something different. No doubt. I mean, Chris W., I mean, I, I feel like I feel the same way. I mean, if you were to find him eight and a half miles down the river in an area that allegedly was already looked through before or searched at and suddenly, boom, he pops out of nowhere and then they have an autopsy and there's no bruises, there's no signs of anything, it seems a little bit odd that they would just, law enforcement would just say, ah, no foul play, we're moving on. What, what, what do you think on that, Chris W.? It's odd whenever they call it an accident before there's even been an autopsy. So, you know, when you look at it from that standpoint, you already got to be asking questions. But it stems farther back into, you know, earlier on in the investigation. When the debit card was found, we got a call and pictures from Chris Dingman asking us to verify. When we verified that, we headed downtown to where they were. We get there. There's no cops there. I call the detective. He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I said, you know, they found this 25, 30 minutes ago, and they called 911 to tell them that they found it. You're not here. You know, so we sat there and waited another 15 minutes for cops to show up to get the card. So when you start seeing chains of events happening like that, you know, and then they're calling it an accident, they want this to go away. It's a black eye on Nashville. Can we talk so about So, of course, that? we've got to do everything. But I'm glad you said that because I keep thinking that maybe my theories are a little off. Like I said, it's these are all, all my <laughs> own personal <laughs> theories here, of course. But I keep thinking that they don't want a bad look. Like you just said, they don't want a black eye on Nashville when it is a huge tr tourist attraction, right? It is a huge place where everybody goes and they party, they drink, they listen to good music, and then they go back home to their respective corners of the world, right? It, it, do you think that there could have been or there may be some sort of small covering up, if you will? Chris Dingman, what are your thoughts? You know, I'm I'm the blunt force tool of this tripod here, and I'm not going to be candid. <clears throat> that night before the credit card was found, uh, I got the blessing from the family, the green light to go ahead and get on social media and stir the pot. Uh, not necessarily call out Metro Nashville, but it was my job to do that because they were concentrated on trying to find their son. I just wanted more eyes on this. Ironically, we get incredible media coverage on it, and less than 12 hours later, a card is found in a location eight days afterwards, seven, eight, nine days afterwards, that hundreds of people have been walking over and around. Uh, I reach out to the family. The family get there. Chris just explained how that happened. What's even more frustrating is after the police get there, they do not tape off that area. Uh, I had the young ladies that had found the card and some other people that were down there searching, blowing my phone up, going, you're not going to believe this. They're gone. And I'm like, what do you mean they're gone? And they go, they're gone. The cops were here, and Chris can verify was not there. Not a very long period of time. Uh, looked at the scene, did just a little bit of minimal work, and poof, they were gone. There was no crime scene tape. There was wow. no detectives brought down there. Nothing along those lines. Uh, 
And this ties back, you know, you, you were asking the dads when they thought there was foul play. I, I had one of the, uh, I had a mother reach out to me that's got a, a child at Mizzou. And we'll just leave it at that. Yeah. And she, her son told her that uh, when they were uh, talking with uh, police, that the police joked around that they usually wait four days to start looking for missing persons because they usually wander back. So this was my first red flag. And I, I mean, in a lot of this stuff, I've, I buffeted because the, the families did not need to see it. You and me have talked about some of the stuff that's come across my board, but absolutely. Yeah. I, I've not been their biggest fan and I, I'm sure they love me. They probably have my picture on their wall, but I've also been a motivator and a coach for a hundred years and I want everybody, I want the best out of everybody. I want the best out of you doing your show. I want everybody to succeed in life and, Man, if I get a hint, I don't think you're carrying your weight. I'm, I'm old school. I want you to carry your weight, especially for this family. This family deserves to know what happened to their kid. We, we didn't. This isn't a false deal in Hollywood where we put together a scene and put together a kid that everybody could fall in love with. The people that knew Riley fell in love with him in real life. So that's the reason we've dug into this and we've been so, you know, don't get me wrong. I, I don't want to be disrespectful. I am 100% grateful that they got to bring their son home. Uh, and, and got to bury him. Uh, you know, we've had so many people that's not had that opportunity that still reach out to me, you know, and, and want some help on their stuff. And I try to help when I can. I am blessed that they got that. But just the situation, and I'm going to touch back and, and make you scratch your head on this. I had uh, I had four or five people that reached out that has had loved ones in that river. Uh, the boys know about a couple of them uh, in the last couple of years. Uh, mm -hmm. and the necklace is a huge deal. This is the first time that's been brought out in public. Uh, I had a lady whose friend went into that river with fake eyelashes and a weave on and was found with everything, including those on her body when they pulled her out. See that, but see Dingman, that's, that's the issue that I'm seeing, right? It's the current of this water i've been seeing tiktoks of people actually mm -hmm. that people have tagged me in and sent them to me direct message wise and and showing people who actually jumped into the river because they were trying to get away from from bad guys or people trying to mug right. them, so on and so forth water seems to be fine doesn't seem to be moving very fast now i get it that certain areas of the river can be very mm -hmm. volatile and some places can be calm but at the same time you're telling me that boots that would be very, very hard to get off of your body dry would be easy to get taken off wet. Then on top of it, the belt latched around tightly around his waist to keep his pants up. Suddenly, those are all gone. It doesn't make sense, but that is interesting, though, that – and thank you, uh, Ryan and, and Chris W. for giving us this information about the, the necklace. The necklace was still on him as well. So – so then the question, though, I, I, speaking it's, of the necklace really quick. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Ryan. It, it's a saying? big river. Yeah, it's moving a lot of water. But you throw something out in the river that's going to float down in the water. Mm -hmm. I just don't see. I mean, if you grab a branch and you're hanging on to it and the current could pull your pants down, I can see that. But if you're floating in the water, unless you get hung on something, you know, that's that's one way I can see the pants coming down, but then they're down around your feet hung on your boots, you know, exactly. They're exactly. not just completely gone. So that's a weird part. But then the only pushback I would say, just saying this out loud with all due respect, because I still feel I'm still side eyeing this, this situation and his story as well. But if he was robbed of his pants and his boots, why wouldn't they take his necklace? That's the or only thing I would say. Or his watch, exactly. So that's the part that I'm. I, I just instantly ask, right? Because any any possibility could have transpired on this tragic night for Riley. But that's one of the things I think of. If it is it a gold necklace? No, it it was a uh, stainless steel with a black and silver cross on it. Okay, okay. Maybe they didn't see it as as of if he was mugged let's just say maybe they didn't see it as a value but they saw those boots and those boots they're not cheap right so maybe that's a situation of course just speculation i don't know here. that you could i don't know that you'd see the necklace because 
when we look at the picture that's out there of him in the shirt, I think you showed it early on. You mm-hmm. still in that picture, you cannot see him wearing a necklace. So they may not have seen it. Yeah. You know, this shirt right here. Good yes. Point. You know, you, you don't point. see the necklace on him, but he had two necklaces on him in that picture. Oh, yeah. Two necklaces on. Oh, wow. And they yes, were both sir. still on his. They were both still on him when he was found. Yes. Oh, two of them. Two of them, guys. Um, that's incredibly important information. So, like I, so like we all are agreeing. It just doesn't make any sense that his, if his pants were even to be ripped off during this current, snagged on a twig or branch or something like that, it would be very hard for him to, for it to rip off of his boots. It would be stuck on his boots. Then on top of it, the boots, which from my understanding, you got to get on the ground sometimes or like put in some real, some real force to get those boots off of your feet dry, you know, let alone if you're in the water, that thing is just like glue to your body. I've done a lot of, I've done a lot of construction work in my life and I've worked in the rain a lot and you go to try to get those boots and pants off and it, it's hard, hard to do by yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Quick. Usually going to lose your socks when you take your boots off. Absolutely. Exactly. Exactly. So it doesn't make sense. That part, I still scratch my head over. Um, But thank you guys so much for clarifying a few things and just giving us a little bit more insight on where, uh, how he was found, what was still left on his body, aside from the socks and the, in the underwear, The, the fact that his shirt and the, his necklaces were still on says a lot. It says a lot, guys. That's just me, though. And, of course, this is still in just theory and speculation. But one thing I do want to ask you, though, because there was a, a conversation that was said a while back, and I know we're taking a little bit of a, a trip way, way back. This has to do with law enforcement, um, the the tip line, et cetera. Is it true that there were tip lines that didn't even know anything about Riley Strain's case, even though he had billboards up? The, it, it, everybody was talking about it on, on the news, et cetera. Is that true that law enforcement didn't know really anything about it, uh, Chris W.? So I don't know a whole lot about that because mm. when we were on the ground searching, we, we heard some of those stories, but I can't verify it because I didn't call. I was busy. You know, my mission was to try to find our son. That, that's what I was doing. So I didn't call. I know I believe Chris Dingman was on a couple of those calls where people were having issues. Um, They got flooded. I'm not going to lie. They got flooded with information because after 48 hours of Riley missing, we were getting too many people starting to ask us questions. So we had to put a post out on social media, you know, Mm -hmm. letting everybody know that, you know, he was missing. You know, please respect our privacy while we're trying to find him. And, you know, we also did our first news interview at 9.05 on Monday morning. So not only did it go social media, it started catching local news and then it made national news. So they they called us at 9 o'clock Monday morning you know, and spent two minutes on the phone with us telling us who the, uh, you know, they were the detective and were working on looking into the case and everything. And here we are, we, we just opened the floodgates for them and, you know, got everybody and their brother looking. Yeah. Yeah. From what we understand though, the people from, and Damon may be able to expand on this, but the people were calling in like the crime stoppers and whoever was answering the phone, it was like they were on another planet because they had no idea what people were even talking to talking about. So that, that's exactly what I was talking about. Like the Crime Stoppers didn't really know about it, which is kind of surprising given the fact that it had already been days of yeah. coverage. Days and this was, of coverage. This was into the end of the first week. You know, it wasn't just Monday morning. It we actually, gone. yeah. I actually had uh, I had at least three phone calls from people that reached out to me directly that had called Crime Stoppers and said, "Hey, you got a minute?" I'm like, "Sure." And they said, "I'm going to put you on a three-way phone call." All right. 
So they call him, and I literally was on the other line. They did not know that. And hmm. this was over like a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday time period. I think that Friday or Thursday evening, uh, you know, about a week into this is when they actually finally started putting two and two together. But I was literally on the phone with several people that would call in and they'd go, we have no idea who you're talking about. And the people's like, well, do you drive to work? One of the ladies, she was reminding me of me. She was a little chippy. And uh, she said, do you drive to work? And she goes, well, yes, ma'am. And she goes, how can you not know who we're talking about? He's on every digital billboard coming to downtown Nashville. No kidding. And she, you know, was not pleased with that comment. And a few other words were said and was hung up. But then we get to, you know, Thursday or Friday of the week. Uh, they're getting through and then they're getting put to the cold case files, which the boys did relate to me that apparently that is where, it's a combination with these detectives. They do cold case, current cases, whatever. But I know there were some people that didn't leave messages with info because they're like, wow, we just got sent to a totally different part of the, you know, the police department. They'll never get this. So, yeah, the first week there was a lot of confusion when it actually come to calling in, giving information or getting information uh, from the police department. We had multiple news outlets that was constantly following with me and I was putting stuff to the family and then they would call to verify, which as a good reporter, two or three, you know, possible, you know, possible ways to, you know, make sure the story's legit. You always want to have your references. And the, the police department literally didn't even know what they were talking about. And they're like, well, your detectives here right now doing this. And they didn't even know that. So mm. once again, it's a huge organization. I, I can see where stuff gets slipped through the, the cracks, but it's one of the reasons I've, I've been a little candid about some of my stuff in them. I just, there's been a lot of stuff that has happened that uh, we, we have a lot of friends back here in Springfield that are actually police officers that have been in the police department here for a lot of years, you know, and, and I have personally talked to them. I've got family that's in the highway patrol in Missouri and they're just like telling me, wow, don't, don't take off. And the family was even told you know, by some people that was down in Nashville. Don't don't take your foot off the gas pedal. Stay on top of this. Keep putting pressure because, as the boy said, they're going to want to rubber stamp this and just move on right down the road. One, no because doubt. we're six, seven hours away from there and, and we're, we're just a blip, you know. Right. And, and that's why the family, you know, I, I went out and was doing what I was doing so the family would have time to find Riley and then have a little time to grieve for Riley. But now that I'm the, 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 you know, the boys and the family and uh, incredible, incredible family, they've been for each other. You know, there's a lot of split households that uh, and I was growing up in one. Uh, God, I, I, I might even actually turn out to be a good dude if I'd had the family that Riley had, you know, having a mom and a stepmom and a mom and a stepdad and a dad. And, and, and he was loved just as much at each house as he was the other. Yeah. So, you know, it just one of those deals that you know it's it's incredible now i just want the family to get answers because they're at that point now they're still grieving but we don't believe and and i'm speaking for myself and they can say something what 100 i don't care what they come back with on their deal there's too many inconsistencies we've had too many professionals that has reached out to us and other law organizations that say and they don't know about some of the info we just released tonight mm -hmm. but there's no way this was you know you, you talked about the pants. Let's say it got snagged. Guys, he's got a belt on. He's got boxers on. Those boxers are coming right down with those pants if they go off. Indeed. Listen, boys, we're, we're men. It's, we've talked about it. It's so easy to get those boxers off when you're taking your <laughs> pants down. Most of the time, you have to be careful because if you're changing in a room and somebody's not supposed to be in there, you got to be careful because they're going to drop to the floor. My personal opinion, which everybody's probably getting tired of that, but it's like I said, I'll, I'll let the boys go ahead and talk, but that's just some of the stuff that we've went through on the backside. Absolutely. Uh, Ryan, Chris, W, you want to add or expand there's, on any of that? There's one thing I wanted to touch on, and that was the fact that uh, there were no other outside resources brought in by the Nashville Police Department. Uh, we contacted the FBI. Uh, we contacted the TBI. They both said that they had to be basically invited into the investigation by the police department or the DA's office. None of that ever happened. Uh, they said it was their investigation and that's where they wanted to leave it. They turned down resources. Uh, we got the United Cajun Navy to come in. Uh, 
volunteers searched, came in and searched because obviously they can't control what a volunteer is doing. Um, Texas EcuSearch was coming in with state-of-the-art drones to help in the investigation, and they they were flat out turned away. Huh. Uh, Nash, Nashville told them that they had the same equipment and they were going to stick with their stuff, even though what? Texas EcuSearch had they had state-of-the-art equipment, and the people that that uh, wrote the software for their stuff were going to be the ones reviewing the footage that they collected. So it seems to me like. You know that that could have been the best option in that area with drones and stuff was to have Texas Ecu search in and and they were turned away. Wow, well, so I, that I don't is... understand why you would turn anybody away that's trying to help you. No kidding. So that is true. I heard I heard that piece, but I didn't know if that was actually true or Absolutely not. So, true. so they were turned away. What I feel like in my mind is two heads are better than one always. So if yeah. you got all hands on deck. You can kind of expedite things a little bit quicker and Absolutely. maybe find Riley and, and, and get this nip this in the bud in a way. You know what I mean? Um, and, and get to the to the point where he was found instead of taking as long as it did. Um, it, it just is wild. The the amount of uh, the dragging of feet and the avoidance of extra resources, because no. why not use it all? You know what I mean? So that mm -hmm. doesn't make any sense to me at all. Chris W., what are your thoughts? Well, I'm going to step back a little bit, and I'm going to throw okay. a question out to you. Sure. You want to waste a little bit of your time on the weekend? Try getting a hold of Nashville PD. Let us know what your thoughts are. Oh, boy. He said what he said, guys. He said. You don't, you don't want to go bad. missing on a Friday night. You definitely don't, clearly. I'm starting to learn that it, it, every day. It was hard for us to get a hold of anybody that first weekend, even after we'd filled out the report, there was a number on the pamphlet that they gave us that said, call, you know, if you got questions or anything, you get put into an automated attendant that you just keep circling around and circling around. You know, I know on the way down, my wife was frantically calling, trying to get a hold of somebody. She finally got a hold of somebody, you know, the lady told her, Oh, he probably hooked up with some bridesmaid. He'll show up in three or four hours. Wow. You can't wow. make it up. No, you can't even write this stuff, guys. <laughs> um, this that's, Absolutely, that's, you cannot write it. No. Nah. It, it's, it's amazing. That's, that's heartbreaking. Nobody should have to go through what we went through. And that's, you know, Still we don't through. want anybody else to ever have to go through this. Hence the reason why second autopsy, right? Hence mm -hmm. the reason why your own independent toxicology report, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. correct. So when, just, just on that, let's tap on that. When are we getting the toxicology re reports and the autopsy, full autopsy report back? Do you guys know when you guys are getting that? We're, th we're three and a half weeks, I believe, right now into... Okay into our waiting time uh, from both sides. We've been told as far out as 90 days, eight to 12 weeks. So hopefully we're halfway to getting something back on, on either one, but hmm. we may have to wait as long as 90 days. Oh, wow. No, you mean not, I an, not an extra 90 days, not an extra no, 90 days, right? No, we're okay. three and a half weeks into that. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. You were saying Chris, W? Eight to 12 saying? weeks is what they, they they told us, eight to 12 weeks from the time that they did the first autopsy. I don't expect it to be any sooner than the 12 weeks. That's my personal opinion. I think it'll be the full 12 weeks. They're hoping it's going to fall from the media. It's going to kind of dwindle away. That's my guess. Uh, I mean, I don't think so, my brother. I'm going to say that right now. The the way you guys are still out here, still talking about Riley, still keeping his his name fresh in everybody's minds, I truly believe that this will not be an out of sight, out of mind type of situation. I think the more you guys talk, the more you guys keep staying transparent to the to the media, um, to the reliable media. Okay, um, the more I think people are going to be asking the same questions and wanting to know the truth on what happened to Riley here. You were going to say something, Riley, uh, uh, Ryan? 
So yeah, I'm, we get we get those messages, those support messages from people all over the country every day still uh, to keep fighting. They want to know answers too. They want they want us to get answers. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole lot of people that are invested around the country in this story, and uh, everybody wants to see an end of it. We want to have some answers. Absolutely. So let's ask. I got some questions. Hopefully, you guys can answer some of these for me. See what I did there? Segue. So here's the thing. I'm curious about this. The text messages. Now, you were you guys were on Brian Enton's uh you guys were on News Nation sitting across from Brian Enton. Fantastic job by Brian Enton. Um but there was some information that uh Michelle actually said during the interview talking about he text Michelle, Riley text Michelle talking about a rum and coke tasting like barbecue. Now, of course, she you, in the video, you, you guys all are kind of in agreement saying that that's not a normal thing to ha have a rum and coke taste anything anywhere near barbecue. That's a little bit odd. But I'm curious about a few things. One, when was that text even sent to him? Where was he during that text? So that's the one. Those are like the two questions I'm asking real quick. Where was he when he sent that text to Michelle. Do we know that yet? Chris W? Don't know that we know exactly. I, I believe we have, you know, pretty good idea where he was at. Um, the timing was, I know it was about 7.15, 7, 7.15 that Friday night. Because mm -hmm. he FaceTimed his mom Somewhere around 7.30, best I can remember, because I was watching a show on TV that runs from 7 to 8 o'clock, and I heard him talk and got up, went in, listened to the conversation, because he was giving his mom a hard time about already being in bed, because she didn't feel good. Right. You know, and he was FaceTime and had a couple of his buddies with him, you know, so. Okay. And in that conversation at that point. So in that FaceTime, was there any... I don't know. Did it? Did it? You know, it, it, from my understanding, from at least from what the articles have said and everything, it seemed like uh, in the background, it was you know, kind of like he was at a bar, he was hanging out with the with his fraternity brothers, hanging out, so on and so forth. I mean, was there any signs of him looking, you know, uh, uh, heavily inebriated? You know, did he seem completely fine? Or at that point in time, he seemed completely fine. The conversation, you know, he was having a good time, but you really couldn't even tell that he had been drinking. I mean, it was just a normal, natural conversation. So that's, you know, one of the reasons that we were concerned, you know, 730 at night, he goes missing, you know, 953. We know that he was coming out of the last bar at 936. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we're talking two, two and a half hours, somewhere in there. So, yeah, it, it bothered me, you know. I knew what I heard, and what I heard was not somebody that was going to be that kind of trouble, like what they were talking, whatever, you know, he didn't meet their code of conduct or whatever. So, I don't know. It, again, Same little like pieces, lots really more quickly. questions. What were you saying, Chris W., last part? What, you, what did you say? You, you, you get a few answers and you get a lot more questions. I see. You I know, see. I get that. Ryan, you were going to say something. I'm sorry. I just, I just said it seemed to everybody like things that escalated really quickly in that last couple of hours. <laughs> yeah. And that's the thing. It just seems interesting that, you know, he says something, a text message about this barbecue tasting rum and Coke, which to me is kind of, is definitely a red flag if that had any effect on him later on. And I think it's also very important as well because Luke Luke's 32 Bridge may not have anything to do with that laced drink. You see what I'm saying? May not. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if he was drinking that at the Miranda Lambert spot or Kid Rock spot or anything, of, uh, anywhere else he was on that pub crawl in. So that's something that can put into consideration, right? Um, mm -hmm. exactly. But I'm... 
I'm curious, do, okay, when did you guys find those text messages? Because that's obviously very new for all of us. When was that found? Recently? Those were, those were provided, you know, we, we told the conversation to the police officers. Uh, I, I know in the first week, we didn't put it public because we were letting them do their job, you know, mm -hmm. to us at that point in time, we were still trying to find Riley and that was our mission. Let them do the legwork of trying to track that down. Um, you know, Michelle didn't talk publicly until she spoke with Brian the other night. That's the first interview that she's actually sat down and done with anybody. So law enforcement does know about it. They knew about the text yes. messages a while ago, and then this just was unearthed to the public on News Nation. Correct? Yes. Okay. Okay. Because I know correct. a lot of people. I know a lot of people at least in the chats, we're like, hey, but why, why now? Why didn't we get this before? So on and so forth. Um, but that's good. That's good to have that clarity um, for sure. Real quick, though, how's the relationship with Luke's 32 Bridge now in comparison to it, what, what it was like when he was first went missing? Chris? Dan? I'll answer that one. What? I'll answer that one. Uh, Luke's manager actually reached out to me. She's reached out to me a couple of times. Uh, Luke has sent his, you know, empathy towards the family and, and everything as far as that goes. Uh, wants to possibly talk to the family, understands with what's going on right now with Riley and trying to get information, toxicology and stuff. You know, it, it's pretty much just left uh, at that point right now. But but they did reach out to the family, uh, which I thought was nice. The family thought that was nice, too. Um we have no information saying that something bad happened in his bar or could have happened in one of the three other bars. That's why, you know, I know Ryan's been working with the Tennessee Alcohol Bureau. I don't know the rest of it. He's been in one on one contact with them. They're the ones that's actually has been doing the investigation on the bars, mm -hmm. uh, which is phenomenal. Uh, there's been some confusion of, of people saying, oh, there's multiple agencies. Unfortunately, right now, Metro Nashville is who we're dealing with. It is what it is. I, nobody wants them to come out with the big W and find out what happened to Riley. And, and we know that it wasn't an accident than, than me. Trust me. I may not seem like that guy. I've already told you. I've been a coach a long time. I want everybody to win. I would Nothing would make me happier. I would love to eat crow for them to come back from their sabbatical and their police training seminar this week and go, wow, we learned cool new stuff. And Maybe this isn't an accident. We're going to take a different view at it. And family, you know, that's been the biggest deal we've talked about as a family. If it was an accident, we've said this from day two or three. If it's an accident, there's 20 or 30 people that we know we have seen on the videos that's been released to the family that was in that area that night. Hmm. Tell us. Let us know. It, it, let's talk to them. We want we want the police to say, okay, Billy Bob was there. This is exactly what happened. This is the reason Billy Bob didn't say anything. Uh, here's the corroborating, you know, collaborating witness or whatever it's called. We have three, four people here that says this is exactly what happened that night. Chris even made it the other night when he was talking about, it. you know, hey, with it, okay. If you can prove to us and not just put a rubber stamp on this, this was an accident. Then, then we have to accept it. But guys, they've, they've, you know, and I understand it's an investigation and they keep some stuff to their cup. We're so far deep in this. There's some stuff they should be talking to us about. We like today we proved and, and went out and showed, you know, we were blessed with a ton of incredibly phenomenal people in Nashville that is still boots on the ground for this family. Not saying any names don't need to, but they are there every day finding information for the family, following leads that we put together in the war room. They're blessed. I mean, mm. I, I get to run my mouth. They're the ones with boots on the ground and actually doing the work. And they put together the, you know, the amount of feet between this ledge and this ledge and where the water level was. And, you know, when you actually look at it and it's, and it's a hard copy and you look at it and Ryan was actually on the boat right below that area. He can verify everything we put up in pictures. Chris, I'm going to let Chris talk about this. You know, the police was saying that uh, he quote unquote may have walked in the water, but Chris, you were there one day when they were possibly looking for something in the river. And, and how was the police going to get to that certain area that they think he walked into the river at? They were repelling. They, they, 
had several officers there in rappelling gear tied off on the wood slats there, right there under the bridge, ready to rappel down if somebody that was down there on the shore from where the boats were saw something that they needed to go look at. So they he had they did not rappel there that day. That so they, they were tied off to. So okay, so they to get down to where they wow. So they had to repel. Wow. And that's not it's not like he was at least in the body cam footage that we saw, he, he didn't have any equipment so he could repel. It's not like he was like, I feel like spelunking today. So I don't get that. I don't get that part. That's a little bit weird. Ryan. The area, as a matter of fact, it was rough enough down at the water's edge between the wall and the water that nobody felt comfortable even putting the dogs in there out of fear of the dogs uh, hurting themselves or getting injured in that area. That's how absolutely rough it was. Wow. That is... uh. That's very telling, gentlemen. That is very, very telling. Well, if somebody can prove to me that it's an accident, I'll accept it. I, you know, I understand that, yes, maybe he could have fallen. But it doesn't answer how he ended up in the water. With no and, injuries. You know, Agreed. yeah, I, I. It just doesn't add up, but I, I would love for somebody to prove to me what happened that they make that makes them think it's an accident. Because mm -hmm. at this point, we're reliving this every single day, you know. And I would like to be able to take some time, grieve that my son's gone, you know. Mm -hmm. and kind of start healing. But right now, we're still on a mission, and it's we don't have the opportunity to start the grieving process till we have the answers. So, you know, if they if they can prove to us it's an accident, bring it on. I'm I'm I am more than ready to let myself start the healing process. <sighs> from, from day one, I feel like we're in the same spot we have been for the last four or five, six weeks. We're just not in Nashville. The same stuff is going on here. Uh, we're doing a remote, a remote investigation is what's going on still. Um, it's busy every day for all of us. Uh, working with people in that area, uh, answering questions, trying to coordinate. Uh, there's there's nothing different on our <laughs> end except for the fact that we're not in Nashville right now. Yeah. No, I understand. I mean, you guys are still working towards finding uh, finding more truths, it, it, finding his timeline, his the storyline that led to this tragedy. How did this all go down? So I, I totally understand. And I think... I echo, and I think the whole family and everybody else who's watching, even the ones in the nosebleed seats, I think we all can agree that, hey, if we're wrong, we're wrong. If we if we believe, if our belief is foul play and we're wrong, we will, as you said, we'll eat crow. We will, we will sit here and say, okay, we were wrong, all right. But at least we tried to figure out what was going on. At least we had the truth rather than just let this be some unsolved, strange, mysterious disappearance and recovery. That's the part that I think uh, I, I think that we're all hoping for by by having these conversations and talking about these things. So, Chris W., thank you so much for just opening up to us and 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 sharing that a, a bit there. Because um, I think if it isn't foul play, I mean, we all want to be wrong, right? Yeah. <laughs> and if we're and if we're right, we want that swift justice with the quickness, right? Um, mm -hmm. But you know, unfortunately, we got to push forward. Um, if if you'll let me, if you'll you know grant me that grace. Um, sure. Now we have to talk about. Well, there's a couple things um, before we go into the frat talk because I want to talk about the frat 
the frat boys, the fraternity and all that, we are going to get into that conversation. But there's a few small things I want to ask. One, Chris Dingman, you were on News <laughs> Nation a, a few weeks ago, um, about a week or so ago, talking about how you needed that you were asking for more footage, especially from a, a specific location across the river. Have you guys received that footage at all? Or are you guys having a hard time getting that footage? You know, it, it was amazing. We had a, uh, a gentleman that reached out that uh, I think he was a retired FBI person, not going to say names, but very fluent in, in what we needed to accomplish. He's been helping uh, on the on the backside with the family, as, as Ryan put. We're, we have investigations going on daily. He reached out to Marathon. Uh, I think it was either Sam or somebody that was actually head of security for Marathon in the United States. And was actually working the angle of us possibly seeing the footage. Uh, Metro Nashville uh, reached out, said, send me whatever footage you have and shut down. Uh, do not show to anybody, etc. And the boys have actually asked Metro Nashville about that footage. Um, I'll let them answer in their own words because they've talked with the police. But, hmm. yeah, unfortunately, as far as I know, they've never even looked at the footage. Um uh, I'm going to touch a little bit and let them answer. We actually had a lady that I mentioned to you. We had a loved one that had went in the river there. They actually used the marathon footage to verify that he went in the river at that location. He was on that side, but she told me that it was at night and you could actually see the rocks and the trash on the opposite side of the bank where Riley quote unquote walked into the water. Mm. So that's to me why that footage has been, and it was not raining that night at that time from all the videos we've all seen that has been shown there was no moisture and there was no heavy clouds etc i would love to see that footage there's a lot of footage that we've had some internet sleuths that's been on the boots on the ground in nashville that's found that cameras that uh the the boys i'm, I'm gonna let them finish this part of the conversation but but no at this moment uh the footage was supposedly turned over and i'm gonna let them answer if the police has said anything to them about it yeah, uh, gentlemen, uh, have you guys seen any? Not have you guys seen not one stitch, not one frame of any extra footage that he's he's talking about right now? I'm going to throw it to Ryan first. Okay, um, what we were told the last time we talked to the detective is, of course, this has transitioned to a death investigation. Uh, there's going to be no more footage released. Uh, everything's locked down. And it was a short and sweet answer to the point with the marathon footage was that there was nothing on it or nothing of value, mm -hmm. something along those lines. But that was basically what was told to us, that there was nothing of value on it. Wow. Um, <laughs> okay. Okay. Nothing of that. That's okay. Uh, Chris W., can, do you mind? You saw the footage too, right? So... Ryan, myself, and Michelle all got to see what footage the police would show us. The only thing that we've seen that hasn't been shown to the public, there's two videos that I can remember. The first one is where they show Riley walking down the stairs before he's exiting uh, Luke's 32. Mm -hmm. And we see him walk down the stairs. Um, there is a bouncer in front of him, I believe. Um, his buddy is behind him, comes down to just right around the knee area of his buddy. And then he goes back up, but Riley is walking down the stairs. Now the detective said that there was audio, but we couldn't hear it because his speakers weren't working or something like that, but said that Riley was talking with his buddy as they were coming down the stairs, you know, Riley's walking by himself, not being held up, not being you know, right. forcibly, nobody's grabbed him, you know, hauling him out. Um, so we saw that. The other video footage that we saw was between the bridges. And they said they're not going to release that because it's too grainy. But still yet, they showed it to us and we were able to make out that it was right. So, But it's weird. That. It's weird because we're seeing other footage from... Because I'm going in, I'm going to be going into venturing into the scooter footage 
You know what I'm talking about, right? Uh -huh. It's past the yeah. second. It's past the second bridge. It's very grainy. It's very grainy as well. But you can still make out a bunch of stuff that's going on there, and a and a gang of scooters whiz by. So if they're able to have that out here, why wouldn't they just show the rest of the stuff and just call the day, call the dog dog on day? That's the part that doesn't make any sense to me. The part that you said, Ryan, that you say that the footage that you you guys asked for showing from across the river on the other side of the river and all it's, all it's showing is there's nothing to see there no it, it, put it out there L let's let's all see it maybe there's something that somebody else can see maybe there's commotion yeah maybe it's a very wide shot but man these people out here these internet sleuths these people who are so techno technologically savvy out here would be able to like blow something up and and de digitalize you know degrain something and make something out of nothing it's it's pretty incredible so I, I i find that very odd that all this information these other videos have not been put out here for all of us to see or even for for you guys to actually just have you know to to just look over and have as evidence as far as his his timeline so that doesn't make any sense yeah. now let's talk about the scooter gang i call it the scooter gang okay now there's yeah. this there's a footage from this detention center i guess uh it's past the, the second bridge it's very grainy it's very dark but one thing that's very interesting is all the commotion there's a there's things that are going on there and then there's a group of scooters, guys riding scooters, people riding scooters that whiz by. Now, has there been, and we, Chris Dingman, we talked about this uh, together uh, on the show. People were asking about it live on the show. So I'm going to ask it again here since we have our friends here too. Have you guys looked into the, the scooter company? Have you looked into the people that are riding that scooter? Yeah, we actually looked into it. Uh, one of the gentlemen that's been helping us with it actually did the research on it. And there's three major lines, if I remember right, of scooters that are uh, being leased down there downtown. Uh, the response he got back from the scooter companies, all three of them, they would have to be subpoenaed, which I understand that. And at this point, we don't have any way to do that as a family. But what caught me as extremely odd is the subpoena doesn't work for that area. They we would have to give the names of the people that was riding the scooters for them to release the information. And even the gentleman, he was like, well, if we knew their names, we wouldn't need to subpoena the, the scooters. So unfortunately, at this moment, the, the scooters are a complete dead end unless the police department actually subpoenas them or this turns into some other type of case uh, down the road with the family. Uh, but it just struck me odd that, you know, they wanted uh, the names of the people. So I, it's probably a HIPAA deal. But, you know, how are we going to know the names of the people, which which we're, we're talking right now? Once again, we still we, we thought we had a little bit of a lead the last time when the young lady come on, but it, it ended up panning out. But, man, if anybody was down there and had their scooters or was on the scooters or was in a parked car or anything, you know, guys, we're. Bon Jovi, we're living on a prayer right now. We need information, and we would love to have some more. No kidding, because uh, that seems like an oxymoron. You know, oh, we you you need a subpoena to get their information, yet you need to know who they are so that you can get a subpoena <laughs> for that yeah. for that information. So it doesn't make yeah. it a little bit weird. Um, so so that's kind of a little bit of a dead end, a little bit. But yes. you guys are working something. You guys are working around it and trying to figure something out correct mm -hmm. yes okay okay um and uh family i don't know what's going on with the uh the the crackling guys just so you know i don't know what that is it's maybe there's just an audio issue going on here just so the fam knows because they're talking about it in the chat so yes. we're gonna we're gonna move on uh so speaking of other things that were going on in um in this in this search he was found, he, of course he was found, but his cell phone was left behind. One of the questions I do have, was there any activity, did they do any deep dive into his cell phone? Was there any activity on any other apps? Was he talking to anybody while he was on 
his walk? Was there any conversations with anybody that sort? Okay. Um, we got, we got Ryan back. Um, so what I was asking is, was there any activities on other apps that he was on? Okay. Um, do we know anything as far as a deep dive into his, his cell phone? If there was any activity on his Snapchat, any dating apps, et cetera, was there anything of that sort, uh, that had unearthed during your investigation? So, fellas? So what we know is he was texting and on Snapchat. Um, he also took a call on speakerphone, um, the video that the cops, the first police video that was released where he was crossing the street there by the barricade. And we know that he spoke with the lady in the cowboy hat. Um, that we, we know, we know he was on speakerphone there. We know that, you know, they were using Snapchat that night. Mm -hmm. As far as any other information, I think, we're still waiting on them to get the uh, information back from Apple and them for the warrants and stuff. Okay. Okay. So that's still uh, uh, an unanswered question as of yet, as far as his activities, if he was on any other apps aside from Snapchat and just text messages and, and whatnot. Okay. Uh, Ryan, Ryan, would you like to expand on that or, or add on to that at all? Um, did you touch on the fitness tracker app? I got I got a little no. sidetracked there with my phone. Uh, it's, it's okay. We're, um, we're waiting. Apps, yes. Supposedly fitness tracker? the fitness tracker. We're waiting for the police to hopefully come back with uh, anything that may be on his fitness tracker app. Hmm. So that could that could potentially give us give us something there as well. Whatever you know, I don't know what all the fitness app or fitness tracker app will show. You know, heart rate stuff like that. Um, but it's on his. Yeah. It, that's on his watch, though, right? His Apple Watch, yeah. not yeah. on his cell phone. Uh, yeah, and Correct. of course that was left on his on on his remains on his body. So yeah. yes, um, that is big. Uh, but I understand that his his Apple Watch wasn't connected to his phone, right? Yeah, but the police it's are saying that they can find find something off of it. Okay, I see. I see. Okay. Um, and, and, and we'll see, uh, what were you going to say, Chris, were you going to say something, Dingman? Uh, we've talked and my son's got an Apple watch too, even though it's not Bluetooth to the phone, it is still recording as long as the watch had battery power and was working that we don't know how long, one of the big, the, the million dollar questions is, is for me is how long was Riley actually in the water? But if, if that watch was in the water, which we've been told by a lot of uh, Apple users, I'm a dinosaur, I'm an Android, but the, the young generations tell me that the iPhone stuff is very, very water resistant. Uh, so even if it was not Bluetooth to the phone, it still would have been collecting, uh, collecting data. Uh, Millie, uh, Ryan's wife, had even actually made the comment that they actually show if there's been sharp falls or, you know, stuff like that. My son had brought up, he goes, Dad, I want to know his heart rate, uh, how fast he was running. And I'm like, that that all that crap's on there, and he goes, "Oh yeah, that's why oh, yeah. mom's got one on you." And I thought, "Well, they're just tracking me." But apparently, they want to see when I pass away, I guess. But no, <laughs> apparently, there's a lot, a lot of information that I have no clue about. But it will be accessible if they can get access to the watch. Absolutely, absolutely. So hopefully, we can get more information about that. Um, so then, who's leading the investigation right now? Because I understand that local PD is not. Uh, investigating in this, the, it's the state PD. So it, is that true or or is that not correct? Um, uh, Chris, it's still local know. PD. It's oh, still sorry. local PD from what we know. Um, so it's still the same detectives that we've been talking to. Uh, they're waiting on the uh, warrant and subpoena to come back from Apple, I believe, and Google for information to the watch and then I guess Google's tracking is quite good too. So they're waiting to get that information back. I see. I see. I see. Well, hopefully we get man. Hopefully we get some 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 news here very, very soon. Uh any private investigators hired within the family, for the family, et cetera? Not at this point. Okay. Let me know if you need one. I know a couple. Okay. Let me know if you okay. can. Uh, I know a couple, and they're very great. They're very thorough. 
Okay. You know, just to touch base on that too, and, and not the yeah. private investigator, but we've discussed this and, and parents, if you're watching this, because we know the kids aren't doing it, get, get passwords, have, have a friend, a family member, put it in your safe, what, whatever rapport you need to get with your kids. Uh, unfortunately, another really good close friend of the family lost their son a week after Riley went missing. And it's the same deal. He actually had his own phone account. It wasn't through the parents. They have no passwords. They're pretty sure that there's, you know, something that was on his phone that night to let him to do what he did that evening. Uh, once again, uh, another very good, you know, close friend of the family who liked, you know, the strains and, and Ryan and Chris and Millie and Michelle, if they had passwords, we would have a lot more information right now. But uh, I know kids want to be secret. Um uh, I leave mine without a password on just to scare people in case they do find it because the stuff that's on it, but that's another story. But man, if you, you know, loved ones, whether it's your kids, your, your spouse or something, make sure somebody has passwords to their phones because Chris and, and the family and, and it's just been an absolute nightmare. And my other friends, you know, not, not knowing what is on that phone that could put us in the right direction to give us a lot of great answers. We're five, five weeks going into six weeks into this deal, and they're still waiting on warrants to be executed and information to be given. And if we had those magic passwords, boys, we this would have been a whole new ball game 48 hours into it instead of six weeks. No doubt. No doubt. Quick question, though, before we go into the fraternity uh, conversation, um, the items, the boots and his jeans, have they ever been found? Not that no. we're aware of. Not at all. That's good to know. Because I know that there's been a lot of people on TikTok sharing videos of like, we found the pants and, and so on and so forth. And I understand a lot of those were not in, in any connection to Riley. But I know that people are still looking. People are still keeping their eyes open in hopes to find anything. His boots, his, his, his pants, even we're, his belt, etc. cetera. What were you going to say? We're still getting videos sent to us, still send pictures sent to us. You know, we look at them all. We may not reply to everybody, but we look at everything that's sent to us because, you know, who knows when that next clue is going to pop up. So mm -hmm. we, we do actively look at everything. Um, you know, you talked about the video with the scooters and stuff. The night that that came out, I bet you we studied that video for a good three hours and there was four or five of us in the room that night mm -hmm. and each of us were watching it on our own, you know, cell phone or tablet and zooming in and looking at things and taking notes and having people, you know, others in the room. Hey, take a look at this. Does this make sense? Does this look right? Did you see this car? Did you see, you know, those scooters? Hey, two cop cars just went through. Did you catch that? So all that information, we appreciate everybody that can work the video magic that can lighten it and make it a little clearer and, you know, zoom in and do all the cool stuff because it does help us to get better ideas and look mm -hmm. at things. And we appreciate all that information. Have you guys started a dialogue with any of the other bars that he went to? You know, we haven't had any contact with any of the bars really um no uh, we, why we, not we have it why not are they avoiding communication or maybe or or have you guys not thought of that yet we we honestly we didn't think of it early on because our mission was just to find riley after the fact you know the videos have all been turned over to the police department and you know they were getting hounded by lots of people wanting to see the videos all the bars were mm -hmm. and so you know they went to the cops and they're like hey we've given you everything why you know why are these people still hounding us so we didn't go back and ask them for anything we did ask the police to see the videos they're not showing us any of them <sighs> So the police have those footage, that footage as well of him matriculating, patroning in these particular bars, all those bars that he was at. They have those that footage. 
but they're not willing to share it. With we've you been guys. told. <laughs> but, but why? That doesn't, man, that doesn't make any sense. Why? Ryan, you, your thoughts? Well, yeah. The TABC, the Tennessee Alcohol and Beverage Commission, started their own investigation, um, I believe, the beginning of the second week of all this. And supposedly they have pulled all the footage from the bars, uh, cash register records, uh, employee information, the whole nine yards. And we have been in contact with them. They're, they've kept us updated as, as well as they can but apparently they have a pile of information that they're trying to filter through to and are supposed to get back with us with their findings on that. That's interesting because you'd, you'd think that since they're saying no foul play, no foul play suspected, why are they withholding this information? Why won't they just give it to you guys if they really feel that there isn't any foul play involved? I get it, playing it close to the vest, holding information because you don't want them to want any suspect that's out here in these streets believing that you are hot on their trail or them doing something devastating or or bad, you know, to try to get away from the situation or, you know, from the heat of the police. But at the same time, if they are saying again, if they're saying that there's no foul play suspected, why not just give you guys the whole kit and caboodle, the whole enchilada, everything? Why not? That doesn't make any sense. You gonna say? We'd love it's, it. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 a mountain of information, you know, that I'm sure that the police department does have. Uh, from the get go, you know, the police got involved. Uh, like Chris said, we were trying to concentrate on finding Riley. Um, there's once again, there's not a playbook for this. You know, we don't know. As far as us trying to go through hours and hours of video footage from all these bars that may turn up nothing to our eye, you know, we're trusting that the police department was working on their end to be going through that information for us. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it's this is uh, <laughs> like I said, my mind is still a little bit blown on how things are being handled. Uh, and that's way before Riley was even found. OK, this is when you from from the from the embryostasis of when you guys were talking about how there was lack of communication. And then even the fact that he has been found and police, local police, police are sitting there saying, ah, no foul play. The fact that they're not willing to release all the information to you guys so that you can at least see what's going on to see if maybe he drank something. Maybe somebody slipped something in his drink at one of these bars that tasted like barbecue, the fact that they're not even giving you that stuff is pretty insane to me. Unless, like I said before, they're trying to hold back information because they're thinking that Riley's story will die down. And then eventually they go, well, the heat isn't, you know, the, 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 ten, the attention on Riley isn't as big. It's not hashtag, you know, Riley strain anymore. Eh, we'll hand it over to them so that if you guys were to give it out to the public, leak that information it's just not even a blip on the radar yeah i'm just saying well, that out loud <laughs> yeah i'm sorry, we, but we i'm just saying that loud y'all go we ahead don't know how the whole thing works you know uh, yeah as far as as dealing with the police i mean we're we're pretty new at this so yeah uh, we're we were kind of going along with the process you know and things of course it's been fluid the whole time changing from day to day you know and there's things that come up that you don't really agree with that makes you somewhat skeptical you know, it, it, it builds over time. Yeah. You know, knowing now what we know, if we were to go through the same thing again, there'd be a lot of things done different from the start. Right. And God forbid, hopefully you never have to go through this ever again. Right. Um, but the information and the experience that you did have, I know that there's a lot of other families that could really use your expertise and really use your help and pointers, uh, especially because there's always a kid. There's always somebody going missing out here. In these in these wild streets that we called the world, so you know maybe you're able to take the knowledge that you have and pass it on to another family in need for sure. Right. But let's talk about this, the fraternity. I've had really in depth conversation with Chris Dingman uh, of, uh, about a week or so ago about this convers about this, and the thing is, is when I saw that interview on Brian Enton or, or on News Nation. Um, Shoot, he should have his own show for crying out loud. But I digress. He pulled up and talked about this fraternity thing. Now, 
the way that they've been operating out here in these streets, at least in the public eye, has been absolutely appalling. Um, there has been no talk, no representation of showing grief before the candlelight vigil that came out the same day that you that Chris Dingman came on to the show, which was also interesting. But before that, there was nothing from them. They it, absolutely mums the word. They didn't say a damn thing. There was no nobody coming out as a spokesperson. They didn't have a fraternity brother, Chris Dingman, okay, coming out, speaking out for the fraternity or, or anything thing of that sort. Everyone was absolutely quiet. So when I heard the conversation that you had with Brian Enton on News Nation about the fraternity, my mind was absolutely blown on how they approached the situation, how the fact that they didn't even reach out and look for him when he was already lost to begin with that night. The fact that they didn't call 911 until mid-afternoon or mid-day the following day. How they didn't stay with you guys at the at the precinct while you guys are there concerned over your son. I, I'm just so... I'm just so shocked on how they were still dressing up and going to, you know, their their certain uh, uh, um, ceremony ceremonies and 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 their little galas or whatever that they were a part of, instead of actually standing by and being there for their fraternity brother. So, can we talk a little bit about this? Um, how has it been? How was it with the exchange with the members of the, this? fraternity that Riley was a part of. I'm going to throw this to Ryan. Can I throw that to you real quick? Yeah, I, I can tell you what about early, earlier last week, um, I spoke with a couple of his closer friends, I guess you could say. Um, there, I didn't really get a lot of, well, I didn't hardly get any good information from them. Uh, I asked questions like, uh, what was, what was being discussed on the phone? Uh, one of them was on the phone with him that night when he was, mm -hmm. he was down on gay street. And really I got that he had a finger in one ear and he was yelling in the phone on the other side, cause they were still in the bar, you know, trying to give him directions or what was going on. It was a difficult conversation to hear. You know, that's kind of the answers that I got, uh, which is understandable. Really, it, it's understandable, but really nothing useful you know yeah we were kind of kind of trying to figure out what had been going on throughout the night and there just there wasn't a lot of useful information to be obtained on my end um right i don't know what conversations chris white had had with any of them or his mother but that yeah. was that was my experience with it chris w yes sir any uh i mean what was your experience um you know interacting with any of these fraternity brothers during that time no. when you were looking for Riley? During the time that we were looking for Riley, um, changed text messages with a couple of them, um, but really no, no details. Um, you know, these guys, some of them were roommates, you know, the, the ones that you really want to hear from are the, last five guys that were seen that night with him and or their dates, you know? So you, you take the five guys plus their dates, there's 10 people. We've talked to, I think Ryan's talked to two of them. So we still have eight people, you know, that we haven't heard from, you know, hmm. like I said the other night, why, why do I have to go beating down doors, you know, begging people to talk to us? I, I mean, I would think that they would be wanting to reach out, you know. I, I'd even settle for them sharing pictures with us of them out that night, you know, so that we have something positive to remember Riley by other than, you know, the videos that we've seen and, you know, knowing that he, he's gone. Right. That's interesting. Um, something that you just said, I, I, I need to kind of reiterate and bring out here. The, uh, he was with five other guys, 
correct? He was with five other guys near the end of near the time before he got kicked out, before he was asked to leave Luke's, right? So there's yes, five guys that he was with. And with those five guys were other were, were girls. Am I yes, correct? Sir. So were these yes. girlfriends from Mizzou or were these girls that they just kind of picked up at the bar down the street? You know, what's the story with that? They, Go ahead. The best of my knowledge, they were dates that had come with them from Mizzou for their formal that was happening Saturday night. Okay. Have you heard from the, from the women at all? Not a single one. Wow. I actually, uh, when this first went down, talked to a couple of the young ladies, not the ones that was in the bar with them, but they were actually there with some of the other fraternity brothers at another bar uh, because they weren't 21. I think Lou Bryant's was a strictly 21 and up at that time. They were two or three bars away from there. Uh, you only had to be 18 to get in. Uh, one of the young ladies did reach out. Uh, we talked to her briefly a little bit. I, you know, Unfortunately, she wasn't in that bar. Uh, she isn't one of the dudes from the fraternity house. We all know that they they close ship, circled the wagons. Their conversations are mute. So she was just honest with me. She's like, I, I have no idea what actually transpired, just from what I have been told. And I don't want to tell you something that's not true. And I and I told her, I said, thank you, thank you for being honest. You know, she was she was distressed about it. She goes, I think it's terrible the way this has been handled. You know, and I've never really stopped spoke much about this because I I don't want there's a lot of good kids that I didn't want drug into this chaos that we currently are in, but there's a handful of them that need to be held accountable for what they did that evening. Uh, but yeah, as far as the women goes, and I'm gonna I'm gonna break this out right now. I, mm -hmm. I get literally daily messages on you know, hey, I saw where Riley was hitting on a girl and blah, blah, blah. And, and guys, what I'm going to tell you is just strictly me. This has nothing to do with what the family's been told by the police, what they've been seeing. Uh, I've had a lot of people that was in that bar that evening reach out to me directly. Uh, we, I've actually shared some of the pictures with the families. Uh, possibly Riley was in the background, etc. Riley was not asked to leave per the patrons that were there. Uh, and they've not heard the actual video, but uh, Riley was not asked to leave because he was hitting on a girl there was an altercation with a patron in the bar, male or female, nothing along those lines. Riley was at a bar. Uh, I personally think maybe the boys were joking around a little bit. It may have been Riley's turn to buy a round. This is just strictly me on what I have been told. I have nothing other than conversation from people that was at that bar that night, not the fraternity boys. That's why I would love to verify what we're talking about. But And I've said this from the get-go. There's a very good chance Riley was asked to leave because he was trying to do a good deed you know, Riley may have been trying to buy a round. They were jacking around with each other, which guys do. No, it's my turn. It's your turn. Security was called over to the bar. Riley was, the, you know, as I told my son on the playground, if you're the last person that does something really goofy, you're the one that's going to get in trouble. I have nothing to base this on. I have no video from the bar. We have nothing from the boys that were there that night, but just hmm. from conversations from people that reached out to us, which thank God they did. I mean, it was phenomenal the amount of people that was in that bar that night that your show and all the media we've done had, had reached out. You know, there was no confrontation. Right? Chris even mentioned it. The, the bouncer is walking in front of Riley going down the stairs. I'm, I'm not going to say you have Pascal, but I've been escorted out of a bar before. The, the security <laughs> people do not walk in front of you. I'm, no, they I'm don't. Four, but I'm a, I'm a pretty healthy fella. I used to yeah. be in shape. You know, and, and yeah, if the security guard feels comfortable enough about walking in front of you down to the door, he knows at the top of the stairs, the person behind him he's escorting out is not a violent or somebody wound up. That's one-on-one, guys. You don't have to be a security person to realize I'm walking down a flight of stairs. The person I'm asking to leave is behind me. Once again, I, I firmly believe, this is my personal opinion, not, not the family's, but I think there was something that happened in that bar that may have just been a, a simple gesture that was taken out of control and, you know, out of context, not out of control, because the way he exited that bar, the way you saw him talking to the police officer later on in the body cam footage, we told everybody this the whole time. He is not a confrontational kid, you know, mm -hmm. by no means. 
he, he that's one of the reasons him and my son got along so well is my son's Henri like me and he always had Riley's back and when there was issues that Riley didn't feel comfortable in you know Brooks was right there and and in front of him covering his butt covering his six you know so yeah I I just want that out in public I want that out in public of course I, guys I'm, I'm not trying to be disrespectful but please drop the, the deals with he was there getting hooked up and all that stuff. It, it was not happening guys. Well, I can add a little bit of oh, that. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Ryan. Um, one thing I did get from one of the boys, uh, he would be okay at times. And then other times he wasn't really making a lot of sense with what he was saying. Uh, they were trying to, to get him some water, uh, get him sat down with them, you know, and, and take care of him. He, uh, so he was, in- he was, he, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you. I'm so sorry, but so okay. he was he was in and out of being kind of belligerent. Is that what we're no, understanding? No, there no in and out of kind of making sense with what he was saying and stuff. Okay, uh, it's kind of unclear still yet exactly what they mean by that. Um, but he was apparently at the bar, and I think this female bartender, from what I hear, he was talking to, kind of got aggravated or fed up with trying to make sense out of what he was saying possibly. Mm. And that I think is when he was, she called the bouncers to have him put out. There was no kind of altercation or anything like that. I see. I see. Okay. Cause he's probably saying like, let me get a Bud Light or let me get a rum and Coke, but it's not coming out like that. Right. Yeah. Uh, and that kind of goes along blurring. with what, yeah. Yes. The people that were talking to me, that kind of goes along with what, what, what little bit of information Ryan and Chris has been given. I see. I see. Was was he with a girl as well? No. She he unfortunately, did not have a date. No. no date. She unfortunately did not get to make the trip. Uh, bless her heart. She, her, her her family's been really torn up about this whole deal, too, because, you know, she even made the comment, if I'd have been there, none of this would have happened. But unfortunately, right. she was scheduled to go uh, a couple days, two or three days before uh, a family member decided to come into town, have a have a family weekend and, and she was not able to fulfill and go with Riley. But yeah, that uh, Riley was, and that, that's why I want to put the squash on the whole deal with everybody putting on there. He was there and found a girl. Totally understandable. No, Riley, Riley was not that kid guys. Uh, gotcha. I've got some boys that I've coached that are dogs, trust me. But uh, Riley was not that kid. And the fact he actually talked to her, Chris and, and Ryan can, can clear more on that, but he actually was in communication with her that evening. So, guys, even if you're the worst of dogs, you're not going to be talking to the girl you left back home having fun conversations with when you're at a bar trying to pick up chicks. You don't want your phone anywhere out. Right. You know, so, but I, I know the boys, they they know a little bit more on the phone information, but just when I call her his lady friend, because her name doesn't need to be out in public, but. Of course. Yeah, they okay. were, that, you know, they were in several. Matter of fact, I think she may have been the last person that got texted. Am I right on that, guys? Or was one of the last texts that we know that went through because she even offered her phone up to the police uh, that, when yeah, all this went yeah. down. Yeah. She offered, she goes, Hey, if you want my phone, if it'll help find Riley, take my phone. Yeah. She Ryan. Goes, I want, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Ryan, do you mind, uh, you know, cause I know you're trying to jump in here. So what you, do you mind expanding just, on that a little bit? Well, just back to the, to the whole bar deal. I mean, in, most experiences, you know, you don't, if you're drunk, you don't make sense one minute and then you, then you don't make sense the next. I mean, it's not, you're either drunk or you're not, you know, you're not coherent. No doubt. You're, you know, then he's shown running down the sidewalks and stuff. I mean, I don't see too many drunk guys running down the sidewalks, you know, mm-hmm. it, just, it doesn't pan out with me. Yeah. The math ain't mathin for yeah. sure. The math is not mathin. So, okay. So he wasn't with the, he didn't have a date. He was there. He was going solo. All right. Which a lot of guys do all the time. Um, now. Okay. Did he have a roommate at the hotel? Was he sharing a room yes. at the hotel? He was, he did. Yes. So yes. have you heard anything from the roommate of the hotel room? No, what? nothing. But th- th- see, that's the part that doesn't make sense. Because if he never shows up home, like at the hotel, they were on the phone. The the some of the guys were on the phone with him, saying, "Yeah, just keep going, 
keep going straight, Riley, right? The, where he was, where the interaction with the woman was, where he was on Gay Street, that intersection, right? So if he's, those people are saying, hey, keep going straight, Riley, just keep going straight. He doesn't make it. He has a roommate. His roommate shows up to the hotel room, I'm assuming. Wouldn't he have instantly wondered, hey, where's my boy Riley at? Where's my brother? It's three o'clock in the morning or God knows whatever time he got home at. I get it that he might be a little twisted from drinking and, and kicking it and having a good time. But if he knew that Riley was kicked out of a bar and he just disappeared out there in the streets of Nashville, wouldn't your roommate be a little bit concerned about his safe return? Wouldn't that be the first that's thing in your where, mind? That's, that's where, you know, a lot of the information that we don't know comes into play. We don't know if the person he was rooming with was one of the last five that was with him at the bar. Mm. We don't know that. Um, I do know that at some point somebody told us that when they got to the room, Riley's room key was still in the little envelope sitting on the counter um, that he'd forgot it. So, oh, wow. You know. So I, even so, even that that doesn't surprise me that he forgot it. I mean, you know, but it also gives you some insight on no matter what it would have been like, oh man, he, how is he going to get into the hotel room? You know, yeah. um, we need to make sure he gets into the hotel room and it's God knows what time when they all got back and I get it. Everyone's drunk. Um, especially with this this eyewitness account, this letter you guys received, um, which we're going to talk about here in a second. It's just interesting that obviously they were out there. They were turning it up. They were having a good good time. So why wouldn't they instantly say, okay, the guys, maybe the five that were there, run into the other guys at the hotel and say, hey, yeah, you know, Riley got kicked out of this bar like a couple hours ago. Is he here? Oh, no, he's not. Where is he? You see what I'm saying? I feel like instant concern, instant red flags and alertness would just course through my veins and go, okay, we need to figure out where he's at because we're in a we're in a strange, we're a strange, we're strangers in a town that we know nothing of. So let's go find our brother. And the fact that there's no concern, yeah. no look for him, it's crazy to me. So let's talk about this letter. Okay. You guys got this email okay. or this this note from this person obviously i understand you don't want to disclose who gave you that information but they were on the same floor as these as these as this fraternity and it was just doors slamming and there was a lot of commotion and all that uh i uh, you know uh well ryan do, can you can you elaborate a little bit on this on this letter that was uh given yeah to you guys? I, I never actually read it i think uh the Chris's have probably both read it, but from what we understand, there was a lot of uh, door slamming and people in, in and out of rooms and maybe mm -hmm. some crying and stuff going on. And what I got from one of the guys uh, that I talked to was that one of them had done something to hurt his hand that night, it had something to do with a girl, I think. I don't, you know, we were all that age. We punched things and hurt ourselves and do stupid things, but... Yeah. Apparently, all the commotion, from what he told me, probably stemmed around a hurt hand, and not about the fact that Riley was missing. From what I, from what I understand, that's a little interesting. Um, yeah. Chris W, what are your thoughts yes, on sir. that? What are your thoughts on that information? Do you think it so, flies? Does it fly for you or no? I don't know. I mean. There's so much confusion. The letter was mailed to us in a card. Um, we read it. You know, it answered some questions, but it created more questions. You know, I don't believe that we were able to confirm if they were on the same floor as the floor that Riley was on. I don't believe we were able to get that confirmed. Um, you know, we know they were at the same hotel. Um, again, I hadn't had the conversation that Ryan had, that it was about a hand injury. You know, the people in the letter didn't seem to think it, you know, they seemed to think that it was something 
more extravagant than uh, a hand injury. So, yeah. again, another piece to the puzzle that creates a hundred more questions that you can't seem to get answers to. Can I ask you guys this question? And uh, I had just asked this, you know, because I have to ask this because every option is yeah. on the table still. So I'm going to ask it. Do you think the fraternity could have anything to do with Riley's disappearance? I don't think so, but, you know, with his actual that's what somebody's going to have to prove. Yeah, with his actual disappearance, maybe no, but, you know, there could have been something that possibly led up to him being in the condition he was in that night. Like the barbecue tasting rum and Coke. Yeah. So I keep wondering, could there possibly have been a situation where they were trying to throw a prank on him? Mess with him a little bit. We've all been there. I, I mean, I, I ain't never been there. I've never been there. Well, not, I've never not been to that there. extent. Not but, to that extent, but... Yes. I've, I've definitely had pranks, you know, uh, played on me millions of times, but never something that ever tasted like barbecue and made me feel funny. So I'm kind of curious about, you know, is this a thing that, within the fraternity that they do where they maybe slip something in somebody's drink? I uh, don't know. We, we for, grew up for in fun, a different for time, jokes. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Dingman, what are your thoughts? <laughs> We, we grew up with Everclear and Moonshine. You didn't have to worry about slipping <laughs> anything in a drink. We were just smoked right out of the box. Quick things. Uh, the lady that sent the letter, I mm. also got a deal sent to me today from Trip Advisory. Hop on there, ladies and gentlemen. Tempo Hotel in Nashville in, in March. I'm working out to verify, but a gentleman left a not scathing review for that hotel and goes into more detail of basically – Pervatum of what that lady wrote a letter to the boys to. Oh wow! So it. it I don't know if it's I. I don't know if it's the same date because it just says March 2024. Internet's loose. I, you know, look at that. But that was said to me, and I actually sent it to the war room. When this first went down and the mm. letter showed up, I, me and the boys talked about it. And I said, "What's the odds that one of the boys come home said something really stupid to his date and they got in a fight?" Ryan goes, yeah, what do you do? She slams the door, you get mad, you whack it. Guys would never do anything that stupid. So we we were talking about that option literally right out of the box when that letter was given there. You know, we don't think they had any eye equaling. And, you know, back to tie into the deal, me personally, not the dads, I think those guys were so stupid drunk, they wouldn't have had a clue how to do anything mean at that point to Riley. They don't even realize he's missing. They're fighting with their girlfriends when they get back to the hotel rooms. We've right. all been in a situation similar to that. You're usually so drunk, you're saying stupid, more stupid crap than boys usually do. Then you get into a fight. And I I think those boys were so fraternity up in Nashville <laughs> that, yeah. you know, uh, they wouldn't have had a clue. We've had a lot of people that's tried to put two and two together that's put the boys uh, on those scooters underneath there and as ryan even talked about the one that did talk they were still in the bar with his finger in his ear and his phone in the other trying to listen to riley guys they never even left the bar we don't have a confrontation when they left but we know that last phone call within minutes of him disappearing they're what boys seven blocks away at that point yeah six seven blocks away from there unless they're superman or you know click their heels together like dorothy and teleport over there, it, it's not happening. Yeah. They, yeah, you're right. As far as timing and everything, it's yeah. very difficult for them to be in two places at the same but time and drunk what as hell. You, oh, yeah. And what you're talking about, unfortunately, all you have to do is Google Mizzou. Uh, unfortunately, they've had a lot of very, very unfortunate hazing incidents at that college. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, is there an option that something may have been – Riley was, I don't know the exact head count, but I know Riley was one of the extreme few that did not have a date for this. Boys being stupid boys. Oh, we're going to hook our boy up tonight because we can't be completely stupid, but we're going to do goofy stuff to him because he doesn't have his lady friend there covering his sex and making sure they don't. Yeah. It, was that an option? Oh, I, I believe that. It's, I'm not speaking for the dads, but me as a, as a dude that went out and have, has a 20 year old and, has a bunch of other kids that age running around. Yeah, I could see him 
be an honorary to Riley. I'm going to be polite about it. You know, we've said, I've said from the day one, there's something that may have happened on that trip with the fraternity brothers, them not having a clue what the ultimate end was going to be. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think they had to do with the end of it, but I think they may have had something poor decisions, not a very good conscience and just pure stupidness. We've all been there and had those faults, but I, I think what happened transpired in the bus, the other bars, Riley not having his lady friend with him. I think he was definitely a target or could have been for some bad decisions that were made by them. Do we have proof? We've got nothing. We mm -hmm. have no conversations. We have no footage. You know, Ryan had mentioned about the Tennessee Alcohol Bureau doing their investigation. Right. I, I feel Ryan has a good rapport with them. I've never talked with them, but it does make me feel more comfortable that we have another set of eyes that is looking at this. So if there was something in the bar that transpired and went wrong, um, I think they're the ones that's going to dig it out. I don't think it's going to be Metro Nashville. Yeah, uh, I, I have a feeling that the same thing. I, I second that emotion right there as well. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of factors here. Obviously there's one main factor. I think one common denominator throughout this entire thing, which is alcohol. We got alcohol is definitely the common denominator without with throughout this entire thing. Uh, you know, could it be that he drank something that, that was laced that took him over the edge, um, or not? Uh, we don't know yet, but we do know that there was a, a heavy consumption of liquor of alcohol consumed within all these guys, right? And uh, sure, you know, maybe there was a an argument with the with a guy with his with his girl because maybe he was looking at a girl too long, or maybe she was getting hit on by some other guy at a bar. And then, of course, there's misunderstandings. People say things, stupid things, and things happen. And maybe he punched it, punched the wall really hard. That is a possibility as well. Um, but the fact that still, no matter what, the fact that they came back. And there still wasn't any concern about there was no com commotion. There was no discussion about Riley Strain's whereabouts is very strange to me. And I get it that, you know, the, it's not like they have a den mother looking around. You know, it's not like they have an RA making sure everyone's nicely tucked, you know, ever so comfortably in their hotel rooms and all that stuff at a curfew. I get that. He's a grown man and all that, too. But at the same time, these are his brothers, they should have his back and be worried about his whereabouts, especially if they come home or go back to the hotel so late at night. And I'm, I, I guess I'm hoping that maybe some of the girls that were hanging out with him can, will step forward. Maybe this, the other fraternity brothers will step forward. You know, I get it, wanting to honor the code, but this is somebody's life that was lost. Forget the code. Throw the code out the window. Whatever oath it is. If you got information, step forward and talk. We got a family that wants to know what's going on. Okay? We really, really do want to know what's going on here. All right? Uh, I, I got a couple questions for you guys, and then I'm going to let you guys go. Because I know it's, it's, it's getting late for, for everyone. And uh, I know you guys still got to wake up tomorrow and keep saying his name. And, and keep fighting for, for Riley's uh, uh, for some more clarity in Riley's case, but I got a couple of things. Uh, some people are showing some support like Nicole B. Uh, we are letting go until we have answers. Justice for Riley and his family. Stay strong. Thank you so much, Bonnie. Uh, what can the public do to help the family? I am very thankful for that because this, somebody else asked this as well. I want to, I want to kind of add compound this with S dubs question. Do they need help? Go fund me. So I, I'm wondering, what can the public do now? Obviously, he's been found, but what can the public do now to help with Riley Strain's case? And of course, do you have a GoFundMe set up? Ryan? There is a GoFundMe still in place. Um, there is. Um, as far as what the public can do, they're, they're helping us every step of the way here to keep this story alive. We've got thousands of armchair investigators out across the country and across the world that are still digging and looking for clues. Like, like Bingman mentioned earlier, they're they're taking this footage and they're 
they're enhancing it and blowing it up and picking it apart and sharing it. And it's, it's really helping keep the story alive. Um, at first we wanted them to keep on the police with any information. Uh, absolutely. If you do have any information, uh, do call somebody and let them know. But, uh, we appreciate all the help we've got from everybody. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I mean, uh, maybe of course, if there's any, any other, uh, uh, crowdfunding, uh, uh, website or anything of that sort that you guys, uh, end up putting up, please let us, please let me know. I'll definitely share it with everybody and let everybody know that too. Cause I know a lot of people want to help, um, in, the search for the truth, right? Uh, Notorious G, thank you so much. Mr. Gilbert, Gilbert's thoughts on the scooter guys. I'm going to ask everybody in the room. So I'm going to throw it to Mr. Dingman first, and then we'll go around the room. What are your thoughts on the scooter guys? You know, I, I would love to be able to talk to them. We, we've been reaching out. We've done a lot of interviews. Uh, there's a handful of those gentlemen. There's also, if you look at the Birch Tree slash Detention Center video, and it's extremely grainy. It looks like a ghost. And, and Ryan, I think, has been over this a lot. And so has Chris. There looks like three other people that have been walking over in that area. Looks like maybe looking with cell phones or flashlights over the wall. Uh, guys, we just talked about it. There's 20 plus people that we know that we can see on the quote unquote footage that's been released to us. That's there. You know, we just don't know how to reach out to them. You know, mm -hmm. and, and I would love to be able to, to contact those people. They had to see something. They could either verify that what the one homeless person said, that Riley did keep walking underneath the bridge. Uh, they did. Maybe that was Riley that's in the grainy figure that was walking with them or, you know, just something. But there was too many people. This is 10 o'clock at night. It's not like it's 2 o'clock in the morning. The super scooter people, uh, we've had a lot of people that thought that maybe they, they had, you know, it was the scooter gang of Nashville and they were following Riley, waiting to the right spot to attack him. The crazy part, I don't remember those scooter people as a group or just anything they had on, particularly in any of the other videos up that I have seen. I may have missed something, but, you know, I, somebody was underneath that bridge and they saw something. We just have to keep keep looking till we find that person Absolutely. or multiple people. Absolutely. Uh, Chris W., what are your thoughts on um, yeah. about the scooter guys? You know... We've watched those videos numerous times. We know that they were through there, you know, within a minute to two minute time frame of what was supposedly Riley's last few minutes. So, yes, love to be able to talk to somebody. You know, if somebody knows them, if they're listening, reach out. If you think it might have been you that was on the scooter, reach out. Let us know. I mean, you may not realize what you saw. We, we've had it. We've had it happen. You know, the, the lady in the cowboy hat that saw the video and, you know, they reached out, you know, we, we got to talk to them. We, we know, you know, they didn't see it for a week later or something, but these kind of things, they help, you know, it, it yeah. pieces this puzzle together just one little bit more. No doubt. No doubt. Ryan. Yeah, I've got a couple things on that. Uh, the video that was released from the Birch Building, it's a detention center. I think they have court upstairs and stuff. Worst video cameras ever. You you get across the street trying to see the sidewalk, and it the, the video is horrible. Mm. Uh, that's on the back of the city building. It's pretty disheartening. But uh, then the scooter people... Uh, if you watch the video, they're out in the road headed northbound. And once they get up north of the James Robertson Bridge, they all cut back up on the sidewalk. Uh, I've thought the whole time that they were avoiding something that was either going on or something was that was up in the sidewalk up there where they had just came from. I don't, it doesn't make sense that they're in the road. And then as soon as they get past the bridge, that they jump back over to the sidewalk and I think even one or two of them look back uh, in that direction as they're transitioning up to the sidewalk. So, yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. There's, it, like I said, I think that 
if we can get more information, more, more stuff, um, because yeah. even, uh, Nancy just said as well, uh, there are five to six people carrying someone in, into the woods, um, on scooters on video. TikTok has, I mean, it's more than just TikTok. It's everywhere. This particular yeah. video. I mean, some people are thinking that he's, that they're, that they're, uh, that, that these people are carrying a couch <laughs> with a dog, you know, that they're walking a dog and carrying somebody or carrying a couch and all this stuff. And I mean, there's a lot of, questions because of how grainy the footage is but yeah. it still shows us that there's activity over there during it's, that time so it's there's, a, there's a storyline there Go it's ahead, 10 o'clock on friday night there's stuff yeah. going on uh that video of the of the people that looks like they're carrying something is horrible uh it's horrible video but uh i got a i got that sent to me yesterday i believe from a lady and she assured me that the da's office has that video footage so that was yeah. that was good to hear. Absolutely. Um, and, and so hopefully, you know, uh, I'm hoping that law enforcement just finally gives you guys everything. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm hoping for. Like, you know, we're here. We're we're on this show live. We're talking about it right now. Hopefully somebody part of the local PD is sitting here going, hey, yeah, we should just release the information. Let's just release all the video. Just give it to them. You know, what what harm will that do? You know, unless there's some smoking gun information in there that they're just, you know, trying to hide, which would be absolutely ridiculous, you know. Um, so that's just my personal opinion. Uh, but real quick, uh, Bonnie says, hey, we won't give up on you guys. Yes, I agree. We are not giving up. OK, we are here, uh, you know, showing support, green heart emojis all day long in the chat. So thank you so much for that. Uh, this is a good question. And I, of course, this is a tough one to ask, but we're going to ask it anyway. Kat is asking with uh with pants and socks off or with pants and boots off i think she's trying to say was sa considered slash looked at sa meaning sexual assault was that ever at all looked at and was anything any kind of procedure done to see if there was anything like he was attacked in any type of vicious way like that i'll show throw it to uh chris w not that I am aware of, but again, that may come back with the full autopsy and toxicology reports, but nothing like that has been leaked to us or told to us. Okay. Interesting. Um, Ryan? Hadn't been brought up as of yet till now. Nothing, not a word about any of that. I know it's a tough thing to, to ask and talk about, but I mean, I, I feel like every option is still on the table, right? Until we know everything. Uh, Dingman, thoughts? Yeah, I think it's total bullshit. Uh, not the question. Yes, that right there. If if that had happened to Riley, this is not an, uh, an accidental death. No doubt. My personal opinion, but we've already established that Riley was not there uh, looking to hook up with other men, etc., like that. We've already established the kind of young man he was. And if something like that truly would have happened, this goes along with the lines that has nothing to do with toxicology, nothing to do at all. The family should have been made aware of a situation like this from the get-go. It would totally change, you know, change the dynamics of the case. Like I said, I'm sorry to the people listening. I'm a blunt force object, but no, that's if that's something that has, does come up in the future, they're doing more than hiding shit, but that's my personal opinion. Mm, okay. Matt, uh, thank you so much. They say, how can I get a hold of the family here? I have a two-hour phone call recording that I think they need to hear. Now, you can always send that information to me, and then I can send it to them. Yes. Um, so you can email it straight to me, and I will make sure that it's sent to them, and they can take a look at it for themselves, okay? Um, but thank you so much for that information, and I'm very interested to hear what that two-hour phone call is as well. Misty, thank you so much. It's horrible. Uh, LEs, or law enforcement, sometimes have ego issues, don't want to ask the other agencies for help. Was Riley's phone found? God bless y'all. Um, I absolutely agree with the law enforcement part. Yes, egos get involved, and they, I feel like they forget what the common goal is, which is finding that person or finding the truth about what happened to that person. I agree. Um, was Riley's phone found? No, Still no. There's, there's been no. a lot of phones found in the area uh, so far. None of them have matched up with his. Uh, there's, there's actually been a tremendous amount of stuff found 
in that area, phones, wallets, credit cards, debit cards, stuff like that. But no, not his phone, not his boots. Nothing. Not his boots, pants, wallet, or cell phone. Yeah, we've we've seen a ton of size 12 boots. You know, pictures have been sent to us, but they're not, they're not size 15. So, yeah. Uh, Yeah. Um, We got a demand that Nashville released that video. Uh, It's videos to be real. Um, Yeah, I believe I agree. I think Nashville needs to release the information. If they say no foul play is involved, if they say there's no foul play and they're moving on, release, release the crack in. Okay, let let it all out. Get it to the family so that show they can us get what you got. Time. Exactly. Show us all the cards, man. Let's just get it over with and be done with it, right? So we can, you know, can exactly move forward, right? Um, Ashley, thank you so much. Uh, if some if something shows up on the tox, can or will the family request FBI or another department to step in? That's a good question. I'm going to throw it to you, Dingman, real quick. You know, the sad part is uh, Ryan has actually been in talks with the FBI. We've had the TBI uh, that's actually reached out, giving us the exact same thing, you know, as far as we can't come in unless we've been asked. Uh, Ryan, you can probably take that one. If something does come back on the toxicology, uh, how did they not reach out for more? But we've been yeah. stonewalled from the get go. Yeah. Uh, Ryan. Yeah, please. Your thoughts. I'm going to I'm going to say. uh you know, depending on what comes back, uh, there again, there's no rule book here. We're, we're learning as we go. Uh, once we get those results back, depending on what they say, we'll try to figure out what, ev- what avenue we need to go down with that information. And absolutely, we're not scared to make another phone call back to the FBI. Uh, the first time I talked to them, I was turned away. Uh, actually, it was the TBI that turned me away because they had to be requested. But the FBI... Uh, agent that I spoke with, they had been mm. following the case. They were very familiar with what was going on. This was about a week and a half into things. And we did get the same answer back that they have to be requested, but we're not afraid to, to keep making phone calls to them if we need to, depending on what we get back on the talks. No doubt. Keep making yeah. those phone calls. They, Go ahead, Chris. They, they told us both the same thing because Ryan and I called probably within a day of each other on the FBI. And I think it was two or three days within each other on the TBI. And both of us got the same story from them talking to different people. So we know they have to be invited. Why? I don't understand. You know, I I would have thought FBI would have had jurisdiction over local PD any day of Repeat that last part. I mi- we missed that last part. Any day. Oh, he's he's mute now. Hmm. You're, I'll you're... just add one thing. Okay, uh, go ahead, Chris. Go ahead, Ryan. Sorry. We we were hoping that you know with all the phone information that we could pros- possibly be looking for, that the FBI would have been called in with some of their resources to handle some of that technical stuff. Uh, we're not one hundred percent sold that. Uh, Nashville is right at the top of their game on all of that mm. information as far as with Apple and whatnot. We we felt like the FBI could maybe add something to their investigation. No doubt. No we doubt. Were hopeful for that. Well, but I mean, hopefully, hopefully the, those phone calls are answered um, and they're able to spearhead in the investigation for sure. And that's one thing I'll I'll say really quick. I've noticed that that's the kind of common thread right now. Obviously, um, out of Hendersonville, Tennessee as well, uh, you have Sebastian Rogers. Um, You know, there's that whole investigation has been kind of, for lack of a better term, uh, lackluster, okay? Um, And family are trying to get FBI involved because they feel that local PD isn't really staying on top of it you know um it just seems like there's an ongoing theme here which is uh frustrating you know to say the least so hopefully they'll start picking up the phone calls and start spearheading this investigation here's another good one hotel footage been reviewed before and after the bars that's a good question hotel footage has it been reviewed at all that is a good question we don't know yeah, 
Uh, as far as the police go, we have no idea. Now, we are, as a family unit, are looking at avenues to us that may possibly, we've been brought to our attention that maybe since uh, Riley was a guest at the hotel and is deceased, that the HIPAA stuff could be maybe looked around for mm-hmm. us requesting footage. We, we don't know that yet. Uh, this is something that just transpired in the last 24 hours, but we are pursuing it. Okay. But that's good. Uh, at least, mm-hmm. you know, that you guys are looking into that information or into that that footage. So that's that's always yes. good news. That's very good news. April, thank you so much. You guys are the true definition of what love is. I'm just heartbroken for all of you. Keep fighting for Riley. Never give up. And a wise, wise man once said, Green makes you look good, rather strange. Um, yes, uh, thank you so much for the support. Uh, we, of course, the family really, really appreciates that. Angie, I'm so sorry for your loss. I feel the police dropped the ball. We are all loving Riley, and he will never be forgotten. Blessings. Um, I agree. One other question here. Did you request them to test for GHB toxicology? I think that's a good one as far as his drinks are tasting his drink was tasting like barbecue. That's odd. Could there have been, you know, him being roofied um or GHB? Uh let me throw it over to Chris for this one. We'll start with Chris. Uh W, sorry. Chris W. Yeah, as far as I know, the toxicology report will test for everything. Um just so that we kind of have an answer if that did play into it. Yeah. I mean, I, I see that. Hopefully that's the whole purpose of the toxicology, right? Just to see what's exactly what is everything in his system. It could be THC all the way to GHB or anything of that sort. Uh, you know, uh, anything, alcohol, et cetera. I mean, that's all going to be looked into with this toxicology re- report. So Hopefully the results come back soon, sooner rather than later. I've also heard about preliminary results, like preliminary tests, like a preliminary toxicology report. Not the full thing, but at least a you know like a, a it's kind of like a a broad stroke, if you will. Um, I've heard that on, on in other cases and other si- situations before. Um, so I am kind of curious if they could even give you guys a a little something. Um, in the you know while you wait if that makes any sense ryan makes makes perfect sense but no um okay. nashville was able to tell us from their preliminary results that there were no blunt force trauma uh penetrating wounds broken bones stuff of that nature and ours that we had done so far basically lines up with that and even our even our autopsy guy will not give us any results back until he gets all the information back to where he can make a conclusion on things. Yeah. Uh, information from the first is shared with the second autopsy doctor, and neither one can make a complete conclusion until they get all the results back. I see. I see. And, um, of course, they're taking their time. Interesting. I'm just saying – your independent autopsy is take they're taking their time. It's a so very if you notice. Go ahead. It's I'm a sorry. very I'm sorry. It's a very extensive uh toxicology report that we done. We're not sure exactly what all Nash- Nashville tested for, but uh our doctor did tell me that it was a very extensive, so it could even take longer than the first one. Man, okay. But like I they're taking their time. And uh and and damn right take yep. the time get the information get it right so that there's no need to circle back for a third one does that make sense so um <laughs> hopefully that's right one thing really quick shelby um did you ever somebody said did did anything ever come from the girl in this chat that said she knew one of the uh scooter people nothing came of it just so you guys know it was a it was a nothing burger guys okay it was a nothing burger all right uh, but moving on, Primrose, Justice for Riley Strain. I pray you get definitive answers soon. I'm glad to know Riley had such a wonderful family. We all care and hope for justice. Thank you. Here's a question, though. Chris W., 
What are some things that you and your wife want to uh, would want the world to remember Riley by? I think that's a very good question. It's a great question. Um, Riley was just a gentle, kind-hearted young man that loved nature, loved family, and loved people. I mean, he didn't know a stranger. He, he could walk up, talk to somebody, carry on a conversation, and walk away. Um, you know, he could sit and play with his niece that was real young um, and not be bothered to be playing with his niece, you know? So Riley, you know, we've heard from people all over the world since this has happened, how, you know, things, when they heard the story, it changed their perspective. And, you know, one lady sent us a picture. She got a tattoo of a green R. Mm -hmm. And that was from, I believe, Ireland, if I'm not mistaken, and wrote us a letter of how, you know, it just made her feel, you know, seeing Riley and the connection that she had just from hearing about how Riley was. So you see the green lights, you see all the green hearts. There's a connection with Riley. Riley has made the world a better place. He always told us he was going to do big things. This wasn't quite the big things we thought were going to be. But, you know, he seemed to bring a nation together that is typically divided. So that that tells you what kind of kid he was. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, one thing I do want to say that, that I just want to share with you guys um, about this case, at least for me, because I've been saying it since the start of this case, is I think it brought awareness on brotherhood. Not by blood, but just that connection that you have for that other person. That there is a need, at least within men, to take care of each other. That it's not, it's not emasculating to make sure that your friend gets home safe. It's not emasculating to put the drink down when your friend is maybe drunk or you know had a few too many and just make sure that they get into that Uber or they get into that hotel or their home in one piece. I think that that's one thing that he brought into the forefront for a lot of us. And, and I think this goes beyond just just men this goes beyond people i feel that we're so self self focused so self centered you know we're we're busy with our selfies and our getting our likes and our our views and all that but we're not really worried about that fellow man that's standing right next to them i'm seeing now more than ever whenever i go out i've i'm seeing people who are actually going out of their way to help strangers when there's been a little bit, when that person's had a little bit too much and whatnot, people are actually going out of their way to do the right thing, the selfless thing now. And so just to piggyback what you just said, Chris W., I mean, yeah, he said he was going to do big things and he's doing it. I think I'm hoping that this changes the way that we treat each other out here in these streets, especially when it comes to just when we're all out there on our own agenda to get drunk, to get numbers, to get laid, to look good, whatever. Hopefully we're able to set those things aside and be selfless just for that five minutes. Could be five minutes could, that could change somebody's life. And I think that's what he's really put out here. And uh, I'm thankful for that, for real. So... I have one last question, and it's from another uh, chat here, and I just wanted to pull this up. Um, and so they say this, and that's one thing I've been curious about as well. Angie asked, you know, how long did they say that he was actually in the water? Is there ever, was there ever anything that was said about that at all? That goes back to the autopsy results. Um, there's microorganisms that can get in your bloodstream 
Uh, they actually get in your bone, they get in your bone marrow. And we're hoping <laughs> that that once we get those results back, that some of those tests will be able to give us an amount of time that he was in the water. I see. So in the initial autopsy, the one that local PD did when they initially found him, they didn't say anything about what they found or how they, you know, how long he had been in the water at all. No, no. Wow. What? Oh man. I think there's a lot of variables in that. Uh, that's crazy. Not to get too detailed, but you know, yeah. water temperatures, uh, environmental things, you know, can have an effect on, on a person being in the water. So yeah. I think they really have to have all their information before they can come to a conclusion on that. Wow. Okay. Well, hopefully we get that very, very soon. Go ahead, Chris W. Yes. Remember they're saying this is an accident. Mm -hmm. They are saying yeah. that this is an so, accident. You know, for them, it's an accident. They're they're just waiting on you know the report to be you know, eyes down and T's crossed on cruise control. Right. Move on to the next case. Right. Mm -hmm. And come on down to Nashville. It's safe here. You know. You know there there were one two bodies that were pulled out that we know of in the two weeks we were down there. Mm -hmm. Didn't hear anything on that. You know, how many has been pulled out after we've been gone? Nobody's hearing about them. That's a very, you know, it's sad. Exactly. It's extremely sad. It's interesting. Like I said, I'm hoping that we get more information here very, very soon. I know that you guys are looking and waiting, patiently waiting for the autopsy, the toxicology re re results to come back. Uh, the other thing, though, is that you are still getting information from people. People are still sending you things like people at, in the in the hotel that were uh, uh, staying in the hotel, uh, et cetera. I mean, the thing that does blow my mind, though, is that you just said it, Chris W., you actually just said it. If they say this was an accident, they should release everything. Release all the footage. Mm -hmm. Call it a day. Mm -hmm. yep. If it's not an accident, if it is an accident, then why are you hold withholding that information? What's you hiding? 5 -0? what are you hiding? I think that's really ridiculous. Well, why put the family through all this grief and, and BS? Sorry, I said the real word a while ago. You good? If it's truly that, if it's truly that, right? Come on now, you, we, we're all trying to get through this life together, and we're trying to make right of what's happened, guys. If it's truly an accident, and and it, trust me, if we find out magically when they get the toxicology report, and then the the you know Metro Nashville goes, oh well, we had this the whole time, and this the whole time, and this is how we prove it's an accident. But we had to wait eight to nine weeks to put the family through absolute hell trying to figure out what happened to their kid when they knew it. Son, yeah. it's not going to be good. No. But that's, that's me, not the family. Of course, of course. and I, But I do understand. You're going to say something, Chris W.? You know, there was another incident the same night Riley went missing. It was brought to my attention. There's an article out there. LA Galaxy assistant coach. Look it up. Dig into it. Okay. Same night that Riley went missing. Okay. You, you, mm -hmm. you, you can't elaborate any more than that to give us a little No, synopsis, but a little it'll, summary? it'll be real easy to Google. Just LA Galaxy yeah. coach, Nashville, yeah. Tennessee. Trust me. I'll take a look at it. Yep. Wow. Okay. I I'm still trying to find out more information myself. Mm, mm, mm. Okay. The plot thickens. Ryan, do you have anything you want to say? I just want to thank everybody that's, that's keeping this alive. Uh, you as well. Uh, all the armchair sleuths at home. Uh, keep, keep working on it with us. Yeah. I, uh, I, I second that. I second that thought as well. Um, 
and of course, you know, if we know anything, we'll definitely, you know, if my family, you know, the family chat, et cetera, says anything, uh, if they find out anything, of course, I will make sure it, it is sent to you guys as well. Um, again, we just want clarity, just like you guys want clarity. And so we are rooting for all y'all. We're rooting for this entire family. And, you know, I, I just hope he rests in peace. But I know that you need clarity so that you guys can press on. And um, and there's a lot of unanswered questions that I hope get answered here very, very soon. And so I want to say a big thank you to all three of you, okay? Chris Dingman, Chris Whited, Ryan Gilbert. I want to say thank you so much for coming on and just blessing us with your time because I know there's a lot you guys could be doing. But the fact that you're here says a lot. And um, you answered a lot of questions. We still have a lot of questions, but at the same time, those are things that you guys can't answer. Not yet, at least. Um, and there's information that police are still holding on to that I think would answer some of these questions as well. And hopefully we'll hear about that very soon. Hopefully police just just nut up or shut up, you know, just 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 yeah. just get it out there. You know what I mean? Just get it yeah. over with y'all. Right. But again, Chris W. Chris Dingman, Ryan Gilbert. OK, again, thank you so much for coming on to the show. I really do appreciate it. Many blessings to you guys. Have a great rest of your night. And uh, hopefully we will be talking here very soon. OK, thanks for having us. Appreciate you, thank brother. You. Appreciate you a lot. Appreciate you. Y'all stay blessed. Thank all right, you, man. All right. Thank you. Bye. Have a good night. You too, brothers. Bye. So, guys, um, that, uh, you know, of course, was the amazing family of Riley Strain. I have to say, I absolutely appreciate all of them for being here uh, and being a part of the conversation. It really does mean a lot. Um, this, uh, you know, like I said, it's, it's, it, this is a tough one. This is a tough case. This is a tough situation. They still don't have any clarity at all still to this day. And it blows my mind. Okay. Crazy, crazy that there's stuff that they still do not have in their possession yet. The fact that they even have to do their own independent autopsy and toxicology report says a lot to me as well. It's pretty crazy that they have to do that. Mind blowing and very disheartening because you'd think you'd think that something like this would be absolutely completely wide open between local PD and the strain family, but it's not going on that way. It has not transpired that way, and that is the disturbing part. Then on top of that, because the whole thing, the common denominator, is not only the fact that these, these kids were all heavily inebriated and that, and that alcohol was involved. We're talking about even after that. The common denominator in this case is lack of transparency. Yes, let me repeat that again. Lack of of transparency you're getting lack of transparency from lo local law enforcement and then you're getting lack of transparency from his friends from his own people that are supposed to be calling him their brother that fraternity it seems a bit odd that this young man walks out of a bar obviously very very inebriated and no one Gave a damn about his safety and his whereabouts when they got back home or back into that hotel room. That's mind-blowing to me. Then also, lack of transparency on how did his boots and his pants, in which he was wearing a belt that he wears religiously, how did they get off of his body? when his body was found eight and a half miles down the river. Lack of transparency is the theme here. And it's 
absolutely 110% heartbreaking. Now, I hope one day, very, very soon, I hope law enforcement's watching this show. Hi. Hi, local PD. Sup. Can you give them the footage? If it's an accident, if you believe it's an accident, if you believe there's no foul play, just give them the footage. Show them the car fox. Get it over with. Quit being weird, man. That's all I say. Because it makes things look sus as hell. Lack of transparency, guys. Lack of transparency. Real quick, guys. We get some of these members. Welcome to the family. Ashley, Bonnie, Kimberly, and Angie. Thank you so much for becoming members. And it, just like those four, please consider becoming a member by simply hitting that join button down below. Okay? Uh, Jan Marie, thank you so much for the super sticker. Miss Kirby, thank you so much for the super sticker. And Michelle. Thank you so much for the super sticker as well. I really do appreciate it, okay? Venus, welcome to the family. Thank you so much for becoming a member, okay? I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And I, I'm sorry, Micah, I know that uh, I, I, this was up for a little bit, but we did talk about it in the other super chats, so don't want you to think that I avoided your, your super chat, but... The security camera footage, they still have not gotten that footage from the bars, okay? The police do have that footage, but they have not released it to the family, which I find to be weird. Like I said, something's just not right. Something's not right, okay? Christ, thank you so much. Dark, dark fallen world, so corrupt, couldn't agree more. Reeks to high hell. Thank you for shedding so much light. Godspeed speaks volumes. Agreed. Thank you so much for the super uh, super chat. I really do appreciate it. Again, the lack of transparency is palpable in this case. But I also feel like we are in the same situation with many of these cases that we have been covering as of late. Two of them, not only just Riley's, but another one is coming straight out of Tennessee as well. Sebastian Rogers, same thing. Lack of transparency, at least on one side of the family. Seth Rogers is having issues, at least from what I know. And they're not getting, he's not getting the information like the others are getting information. That's not right. And that's not fair. They shouldn't, law, local law enforcement should not be playing favorites. And now we look at something like this, dealing with Riley Strain's case. And this young man may have had an accident. He may have. This may have been a tragic accident. But if it is, and if it's solely just that, give us the footage. Release it. Let the family see it for themselves. Let the family get all the stuff that you guys already have that you haven't shown to them yet. Let, us, let them see it all. Because a lack of transparency, I'm sure, is killing them. That's the right thing to do. But I will tell you this, though. That toxicology report and that autopsy report, both of them are going to tell us a story. Whether we like to hear that story or not. So get ready, because just because we're not getting transparency from local PD does not mean that we can find it in other ways, and we're going to find it. We are definitely going to find it in those reports. Wait for the tox. Wait for the autopsy. They coming, and they're coming in hot. Anyway, guys. That is the show. I appreciate all y'all for being here. It really does mean a lot. Seriously, it means so much. Okay? Shows to me that you guys still are adamant about getting the truth about what happened to Riley. 
And I'm sure there's some people out here, let's be real. There are some people out here that believe that nothing happened, that this was an accident. Y'all are still in the chat, though. <laughs> Y'all still watching. Why? Because you care and because you want to know the truth. And if it is an accident, then it's an accident. And that's fine. But nonetheless, y'all are still showing up. Y'all still showing out. And y'all are still showing that you care. So please do me a favor. Again, thank you so much for to everyone for being here. Hit that like button down below. Please and thank you. If you're watching on YouTube, that would be amazing. All right. Please do me that solid. Let's get to 1.5K before the end, before we wrap up the show. We're almost there. If you're watching on YouTube, okay? If you're watching on Facebook or any anywhere else, please hit that like button, okay? Hit that reaction button, et cetera. That would really mean so much to me, okay? Don't forget to hit that follow button. Follow me on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. Hit that Facebook follow, okay? Follow me on Facebook, all right? Don't forget to crush that subscribe button. Oh, by the way, I will be doing a, um, a discussion, a little late show discussion after show discussion on tiktok in about five minutes okay so we will be chopping it up for a little while not a long time but a little while on tiktok so if you want to join in on in on that conversation please go over to tiktok on my tiktok we're going to be live in about five minutes okay guys like i said it's going to be a short live but i will be live all right don't forget to hit that subscribe button on my YouTube channel, please and thank you. Hit that join button down below. Become a member. Support the channel if you're watching on YouTube. But if you want to support the channel even further, go over to my Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash The Pascal Show. Please and thank you. And of course, check out PascalMerch.com. All right? Thank you guys so much for being here. It means a lot. Thank you so much for your patience. Letting this family speak out hearing them thoroughly that means the world okay anyway guys it's time to get going but i'll see you guys on my after show live on tiktok in about five minutes so hop over there okay but it's time to get going much love to you guys be good to yourselves be good to one another we'll talk soon this is the pascal show bye